see to shine and see. You know, I wish I had somebody to help me sing this. America, I love you, America. You see, my God, He done shed His face on me. You are the loving for it. He, 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 he crowned my good. He told me he would. Every brotherhood. Run, see, to shine, shine, and see. I thank you, Lord. ABC News, I'm Tom Rivers. Despite the spread of the coronavirus, the Transportation Security Administration reports screening more air travelers in recent days than at any other point in the pandemic. More than 51,000 people died of COVID-19 in the U.S. in the first three weeks of December. Health experts suggest Thanksgiving gatherings could be partly to blame. AAA predicts 84.5 million Americans will travel from today through January 3rd. ABC's Brian Clark. In Twitter video last night, the outgoing president said he might not sign the $900 billion pandemic relief measure. He doesn't like the $600 payments to individuals, wants it raised to $2,000. In California, there are so many people with COVID, they're being treated in hospital hallways and conference rooms. The state's largest hospital systems warn California's health care system may fracture in weeks if people ignore social distancing during the holidays. This is ABC News. The Justice Department is now suing Walmart, accusing it of helping to fuel America's opioid crisis. Officials accuse the country's biggest retailer of illegally selling prescriptions for opioids that his pharmacists, in some cases, admitted they knew were fake. Walmart's also accused of failing to have adequate systems to detect suspicious opioid orders. You've been streaming a lot of TV. Is it all legal? No, you won't get locked up for illegally watching The Mandalorian. This is the way. But the people who put it online illegally could. The Protecting Lawful Streaming Act, part of the 5,000-page COVID-19 stimulus and government funding bill, would make profiting off pirated streaming material a felony, increase fines, and put those found guilty of multiple offenses in prison for up to 10 years. The bill was introduced by Republican Senator Tom Tillis of North Carolina, who points out illegal streaming sucks nearly $30 billion a year out of the U.S. economy. Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Hollywood. I'm Tom Rivers, ABC News. I worry about lots of things. My finances, my grandkids. If you're 65 or older, you have enough things to worry about. Pneumococcal pneumonia shouldn't be one of them. Even healthy adults 65 and older are at increased risk for this potentially serious bacterial lung disease that can disrupt your life for weeks. Help protect yourself with the Prevnar 13 pneumococcal 13 valent conjugate vaccine, diphtheria CRM197 protein. Prevnar 13 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 13 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Prevnar 13 does not protect against all strains of the disease. Don't get Prevnar 13 if you have had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with a weakened immune system may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most commonly reported side effect was pain at the injection site. For additional common side effects and full prescribing information, please call 1-866-694-9300 or visit Prevnar13.com. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 13. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Crisos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. President Trump is telling lawmakers they need to change their COVID-19 relief bill, suggesting he may not sign the $900 billion legislation. The president says the long-awaited bill is a disgrace and is calling on Congress to increase stimulus payments from $600 to $2,000 and get rid of wasteful and unnecessary items. The main CDC is reporting 10 new COVID-related deaths and 458 new known cases. The number of deaths is now above 300 since the start of the pandemic, and the total cases is nearing 20,000. 185 people are currently hospitalized. Governor Janet Mills has extended Maine's state of civil emergency through January 20th. In a statement, Governor Mills also reminded Mainers to remain vigilant this holiday season, saying, quote, The biggest gift we can give this holiday season is not a present under the tree or a hug to a loved one. The best gift we can give and the best gift we can receive is good health. 
New this morning, RSU 73, located northwest of Augusta, now gives the green light for some winter sports. The Livermore Falls Advertiser reports alpine and Nordic skiing, along with basketball, cheer, and ice hockey, have all been approved. This flips the school board's decision, which went against winter sports earlier this month. In a letter, health officials put the safety of those in the school first in line, but said winter sports could happen if safety guidelines are followed. And in sports, the Celtics will tip off the new season tonight at home against the Milwaukee Bucks. The game is at 7.30. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. If you've checked that gift list twice and it's got something different for everyone on it, just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassalboro Townline. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Are you worried about spending too much? Townline Antiques is here to help with that too. Because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 40, and some even 50% off their selection. There's always new cool and unique gift ideas, including collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and so much more. Of course, the problem is you'll not only find lots of great gift ideas, you'll come across things that you might want to take home too. But with their December sale of up to 50% off store-wide, you can take them all home for less. So don't miss out on the Santa size sale with savings up to 50% off this December at Townline Antiques, open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 5. Route 201, right on the Winslow Vassalboro Town Line. <laughs> Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go, take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. M O. O-D-Y Your kid was talking on the cell phone Drove right through your own home Sitting in the parking lot Maybe you get hit a lot Driving through the green light Suddenly your side swipe Put it in reverse But it turned out that it was first Take it to Moody's Take it to Moody's Collision Center Take it to Moody's I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Mostly sunny this morning and for today with highs in the low to mid 30s. Mostly cloudy, milder tomorrow with highs in the 40s. It will be breezy, but the winds will really pick up at night into Christmas Day. Wind gusts over 50 miles per hour are possible for Thursday night and into Friday. Mild in the 50s for Christmas Day, but with rain and strong winds. Batten down the hatches right now. Nice, clear, and calm out there. Sunshine, sunshine eventually. Let's start off with clear skies. You have to have the clear skies before the sunshine comes in. And frankly, some daylight helps, which is because of this. Anyway, I'm off out of my lane. It's 27 and clear in Skowhegan, 29 in Waterville. It's clear 28 in Augusta. And you're up to date. From Legacy 1160, WSKW. His mediocre high school academic achievements have prepared him nicely for a career in radio. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160, WSKW. Good morning. Welcome in. Thanks for getting out of bed or staying in bed, if that's the case. And joining me on the program today, it's the Mike Violet Show officially in progress. For this middle of the weekday that we affectionately refer to as Wednesday. It is Wednesday. It's December 20. Man, the simplest things are giving me a hard time this morning. It's Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020. Merry Christmas to you and yours. The Mike Pilot Show is brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting, 861-7028 online at kennebecelectric.com. Live stream the show in bed, out of bed, in your car, on your mobile device, on your PC, on your iPad, on your tablet, whatever you got rigged up. Go to Legacy1160.com. That's powered up by the Harry J. Smith Company, Sanger Avenue in Waterville. You can watch us and listen on Facebook and also on YouTube by simply going to either Facebook.com slash Legacy1160, WSKW, or go to YouTube, type in the search area, Legacy1160, and presto, we come up. Video and audio that you can see and hear brought to you by Moody's Collision Center. It is Wednesday. That means... The Ken and Mike Hour, 7 o'clock, 7.08, Ken Alt Schuler, my once, and now current partner, will join me for the whole hour. 8.08, it's Phil Herling, it's Agree to Disagree, our political analyst extraordinaire, I'm sure, with Christmas wishes and Christmas gifts to hand out 
to politicians and to others. So that's coming up at 8.08. Tomorrow, by the way, big Christmas Eve show, a full hour, a special edition of Contact Sports with Dean Scontras in the 7. In the 8, a full hour of Congressman Jared Golden, who will be one of our topics and hashtags and hot takes right now because you know the drill. It's time to get cracking. Hashtag what? They didn't really say that, did they? You know, while I was on vacation, I woke up in the middle of the night at 3.30 in the morning um, just concerned about climate change. It's hashtags and hot takes on the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160. WSKW. Oops. Sorry about that. A little quick on the draw there this morning. Let's get rolling. Item number one is the president last night calling for Congress to take back the $2.3 trillion stimulus and increase the payout to Americans from $600 to $2,000. The bill they are now planning to send back to my desk is much different than anticipated. It really is a disgrace. You go, Mr. President. Ah, but wait, there's more. Congress found plenty of money for foreign countries, lobbyists, and special interests while sending the bare minimum to the American people who need it. It wasn't their fault. It was China's fault, not their fault. I love Trump. Make America great again. This is the Trump I love. This cut that you just heard let's listen to it again congress found plenty of money for foreign countries lobbyists and special interests while sending the bare minimum to the american people who need it it wasn't their fault it was china's fault not their fault that kind of absolute brutal honesty from the president right there it's china's fault you won't be hearing that during the joe biden experience i can tell you that you will not be hearing the only the only, well, the only fire you'll hear is when he talks about Trump or any Republicans. But this is the Trump we love. One more cut from the president. The bill also allows stimulus checks for the family members of illegal aliens, allowing them to get up to $1,800 each. This is far more than the Americans are given. You go, Mr. President. The president listed those things in the 5,593-page package. He didn't mention the National Mall Museums totaling $10 million, $10 million for gender studies programs in Pakistan, and $2.5 million for internet freedom. This bill is balderdash and poppycock, and let's hope the president stands strong and does not sign the damn thing. Obviously, more on this with Ken and with Bill and Ethan coming up later on at 7 and 8 o'clock, respectively. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the country's, do I really need to say this, the country's top infectious disease expert, rolling up his sleeve Tuesday to receive a dose of the Moderna coronavirus vaccine. Why? Well, here's the good doctor. I consider it an honor to be part of this process. We're dealing with a new pathogen, a virus that was described in January of this year to less than one year later, to have vaccines that are going into the arms of so many people, including myself. So Fauci got it yesterday, inoculated along with Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar, the National Institutes of Health Director Francis Collins, other NIH clinical frontline health workers. This was down in Bethesda, Maryland, right side, right outside, that is, of Washington, D.C. After getting his shot in the arm, Fauci, who shares a birthday with my father tomorrow, on Christmas Eve, gave a thumbs up and rolled his sleeve back down. By the way, Maine's congressional delegation, all four members, have not received their shots as of yet. More on that later here in a bit. <laughs> Moving on, the president on Tuesday granting clemency to 20 convicted felons, including pardons for two men who lied to special counsel Robert Mueller's investigators. The pre-Christmas blitz of forgiveness also included pardons for two crooked former members of Congress and a commuted sentence for a third. Pardons also went to four military contractors who were convicted in the massacre of 17 Iraqis in 2007 and two former Border Patrol agents who covered up the shooting of an unarmed Eagle, 
unarmed illegal immigrant back a few years ago as well. Several people convicted of nonviolent drug crimes, including some serving lengthy sentences, got pardons or commutations as well. The president handed out 15 pardons and five commutations. One of the outspoken members of Congress about this was our own Senator Angus King, who called it wrong. I wonder if Senator King ever called it wrong when Barack Obama pardoned a whole bunch of criminals or when Bill Clinton pardoned a whole bunch of criminals. I don't think I recall that happening. I hate this whole process at all, completely, and it should be stopped. But it's something that's been going on for decades, and it's not going to stop anytime soon unless Congress decides to stop it. And you can bet your boots considering... A lot of the times when presidents pardon people, it's members of Congress. Governor Janet T. Mills, the T stands for tyrant, extending the state of civil emergency. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten now. The tenth time since the coronavirus pandemic started. This one goes through January 20th, 2021. And of course, coincides with Inauguration Day. The emergency state is required in order to draw federal resources and to use all means available to respond to and contain the COVID. And of course, it's also used to scare the living bejesus out of you, which for a lot of people, it does. Believe me, that is part of it. You know, I love political battles where I hate both sides and therefore root for both of them to lose. In this corner, we have the the biggest state employees union in this corner we've got the janet mills administration it's like choosing between the you know what and the deep blue sea um there's a problem here the labor union has filed a complaint against the state alleging that it has failed to provide information about how the administration of governor janet t mills the t stands for tyrant is managing workers during the coronavirus pandemic. This is beautiful stuff right here. Maine has allowed an estimated 85% of its workforce to work remotely in the early months of the COVID, with some employees gradually returning to work during the summer. The MSEA, which represents more than 9,000 employees, says it is pressed for more information on which employees are remote, whether people have gotten sick at work, how much leave has been taken, and who has been required to quarantine and the union's complaint with the Maine Labor Relations Board alleges that the information does not come aside from a rough aggregation that is of employees working remotely and a list of family independents and child health care workers called back into the field. So I love this. I don't know who to wrote root against more. Governor Mills and her administration or the MSEA. The MSEA, of course, which I'm sure almost to a person were in lockstep in voting for Governor Janet T. Mills, now get to reap the benefits. And I love that. I love it when elections have consequences. Don't, 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 don't. don't. All right. Congressman Jared Golden calling out House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer. We heard... Steny here yesterday talking about how members of Congress who earn $174,000 annually are underpaid, and he denounced a successful effort to block a cost of living hike. Well, Congressman Jared Golden yesterday said, quote, if people wonder why working middle class people in America are cynical about the prospects that Washington can fix itself, this is a good example of why. Congressman Golden said this as he was driving back to Maine from the Capitol yesterday. Golden said that he and U.S. Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick, who's a Republican from Pennsylvania, stood against the pay hike because they couldn't see why representatives earning more than three times as much as their constituents should be seeking more money. What a friggin' concept, huh? Kudos to Congressman Golden, who, by the way, will be here live in studio for the whole 8 o'clock hour tomorrow. NBA back underway. The Celtics back at it tonight at an empty TD Garden. They'll take on Giannis, the Greek freak, and the Milwaukee Bucks. 
In game number one of the season, of course, the Celtics will be without Kemba Walker and also Tristan Thompson. So look for the Celtics to get off to a little bit of a shaky start until they get their regulars back. They certainly look very discombobulated in their two preseason games. So they open up tonight, 7.30 tip, by the way, at the Garden. Then they play Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and the Nets on Christmas Day. That's a 5 o'clock game. And then they play the Pacers Sunday night in Indiana. So three games right out of the gate. Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday for the Celtics to begin the NBA season. And that is Hashtags and Hot Takes for this morning. It's that middle of the weekday that we call Wednesday. It's December 23rd. Having a real problem with the date today. And a few other things. It's Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020. We do this every Monday through Friday, right after the 6 o'clock news. Focus on the White House. A day after the White House said the president welcomed it, the president now indicates he might not sign the $900 billion pandemic relief measure. One issue, the one-time stimulus payments to individuals. Increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. He calls the bill negotiated by his own Treasury Secretary a disgrace. Christmas time pardons and sentence commutations for 20 individuals, political allies, Russia inquiry figures. President Trump used his pardon power to benefit two political allies. Former Republican Congressman Chris Collins and Duncan Hunter had each pleaded guilty to felony charges. President Trump also pardoned the campaign operative whose Russia contacts triggered what became the Mueller investigation. The pardons of George Papadopoulos, along with Dutch attorney Alex Van Der Zwan, further erode the legal consequences of an investigation President Trump has long called a hoax. ABC's Aaron Katursky, Richard Cantu, ABC News. Hi, I'm CJ McKenna, Assistant Dean Enrollment at Kennebec Valley Community College. Have you been thinking about attending KVCC and need a little nudge? In my position at the college, I have the opportunity to help students begin, continue, or complete a degree. These students are just like you many balancing multiple responsibilities in addition to their classes. Whether you want to enroll full-time, part-time, or have a conversation about your options, I am here to help. Call me at 453-KVCC, and we can work together to accomplish your educational goals. The holidays may be here, but many of us still have work to do. And a coyote tractor from Whittemore & Sons can move that big pile of snow, transport that wood, and take care of all your other heavy-duty winter jobs in no time. Coyote tractors are some of the toughest, most powerful, fuel-efficient, technologically advanced tractors ever built. With all their uses, a coyote tractor is the gift that keeps on giving all year long. Even Santa has a tractor on his wish list this year. Check out the full line of tough and versatile compact tractors, attachments, implements, and accessories at Whittemore & Sons, your coyote tractor dealer, with dependable sales and service for over 50 years. If you have questions or want to schedule a pickup, just call us at 207-474-2591. Run ahead of the pack with a coyote tractor from Whittemore & Sons on the Wadawa Road in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family who cares. Whittemore & Sons Outdoor power equipment. Ho, ho, hold up. The year is ending already, and we're way behind. We've got to do something fast that we won't hit our year-end goal. So this month, we're slaying prices. Don't wait for the jolly old elf, because right now, Santa Joey at Colebrook Mitsubishi will give you 4000 minimum for your old sled. Drive away in a brand new 2020 Mitsubishi Mirage with no money down for 179 a month. Or choose a new 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross or Mitsubishi Outlander Sport with no money down for $299 a month. Choose our top-of-the-line model, the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander with room for seven with no money down for only $320 a month. These are purchases not leases. That's a brand new vehicle with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty with no down payment. Are other dealers roasting your chestnuts over past credit mishaps? Let us help you beat the holiday blues and drive home a new Mitsubishi today. Come visit us at Colebrook Mitsubishi Route 201 in Skowhegan or visit us online at colebrookmitsubishi.com. Do you have itchy, irritated, or burning eyes? You may be experiencing dry eye syndrome, and the upcoming main winter could make it even worse. So contact Kennebec Eye Care and let them help find a solution to the problem. When we concentrate on activities like reading, driving, and computers, we blink less, which reduces the amount of tears on the surface of the eye. An exam with Kennebec Eye Care will identify what's causing the issue and how to best treat it. Schedule an appointment today by calling 877 877- 2797. Kennebec Eye Care, your site specialists, 216 Main Street in Waterville, and online at KennebecEyeCare.com. Take it to Moody's. 
Take it to Moody's Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go, take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. M O O D Y. Your kid was talking on the cell phone, drove right through your own home, sitting in the parking lot. Maybe you get hit a lot, driving through the green light. Suddenly your side swipe, put it in reverse, but it turned out that it was first. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. Six twenty nine. Merry Christmas to you and yours from all of us here at Legacy 1160, WSKW, Mixed Main Media, Mountain Wireless Broadcasting. You've got the next few days off. Good for you. Enjoy. It's good to see some friends that I have welcome family into their homes for Christmas. Good for you. Of course, I'm going to have to call Governor Mills on you. I mean, who do you think? You, th- you think you're Dr. Deborah Burks or something? Only government officials can break the restrictive laws that they have put into place. You, peasant, can't do that. But seriously, I'm glad to see some friends welcome kids and grandkids home or go see grandkids. Good. I won't tell General Mills. Coming up. First, it's a real news update from CBS 13's John Krisos, who's in for Peterson this morning. Sound segment. We're going to hear from President Trump. We're going to hear from Joe Biden. And we're going to hear from Frank and George Costanza. Later, it's the Ken and Mike Hour at 7. Agree to disagree. Phil and Ethan at 8. I'm Mike Pilot on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Good. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Krisos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. President Trump is telling lawmakers they need to change their COVID-19 relief bill, suggesting he may not sign the $900 billion legislation. The president says the long-awaited bill is a disgrace and is calling on Congress to increase stimulus payments from $600 to $2,000 and get rid of wasteful and unnecessary items. The main CDC is reporting 10 new COVID-related deaths and 458 new known cases. The number of deaths is now above 300 since the start of the pandemic, and the total cases is nearing 20,000. 185 people are currently hospitalized. Governor Janet Mills has extended Maine's state of civil emergency through January 20th. In a statement, Governor Mills also reminded Mainers to remain vigilant this holiday season, saying, quote, The biggest gift we can give this holiday season is not a present under the tree or a hug to a loved one. The best gift we can give and the best gift we can receive is good health. New this morning, RSU 73, located northwest of Augusta, now gives the green light for some winter sports. The Livermore Falls advertiser reports alpine and Nordic skiing, along with basketball, cheer, and ice hockey, have all been approved. This flips the school board's decision, which went against winter sports earlier this month. In a letter, health officials put the safety of those in the school first in line, but said winter sports could happen if safety guidelines are followed. And in sports, the Celtics will tip off the new season tonight at home against the Milwaukee Bucks. The game is at 7.30. I'm CBS 13's John Krasos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. If you've checked that gift list twice and got something different for everyone on it, just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassarboro Town Line. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Are you worried about spending too much? Townline Antiques is here to help with that too. Because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 40, some even 50% off their selection. There's always new, cool, and unique gift ideas, including collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and so much more. Of course, the problem is, you'll not only find lots of great gift ideas, you'll come across things you may want to take home too. But with their December sale of up to 50% off, store-wide, you can take them all home for less. So don't miss out on this Santa size sale with savings up to 50% off this December at Townline Antiques. Open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to
to 5, Route 201, right on the Winslow Vassaboro town line. Electrical repairs should never be done without the knowledge of how to do it safely. Better yet, skip that stress and let Kennebec Electric and Lighting take care of it for you. Kennebec Electric has offered professional electric and lighting service and expert installation in homes and businesses for over 37 years, and they stand behind that experience with a guarantee on all their work. Kennebec Electric and Lighting. Contact them for all your electric and lighting servicing, including installations and repairs, at 861-7028 or online at kennebecelectric.com. The holidays are the best times to spend with those we love as we share memories and create new ones. But if you do plan on toasting to good times with family and friends, remember, it's never a good idea to drink and drive. If you're planning on having a drink this Christmas, please protect your friends by designating a driver or calling a cab. That way, everyone returns home safely. This message brought to you by Delta Ambulance. Compassion, leadership, excellence. That's Delta Ambulance. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Mostly sunny this morning and for today with highs in the low to mid 30s. Mostly cloudy, milder tomorrow with highs in the 40s. It will be breezy, but the winds will really pick up at night into Christmas Day. Wind gusts over 50 miles per hour are possible for Thursday night and into Friday. Mild in the 50s for Christmas Day, but with rain and strong winds. Thank you, Lexi. Clear. It's 27 in Skowhegan, 29 in Waterville. Clear skies. 28 degrees in Augusta. You're up to date from Legacy 1160 WSKW. You think it? He says it. Yada, yada, yada. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Good morning. Welcome in 634. Mike Violet Show in progress. Legacy 1160 WSKW. Mains Heritage Station. Shows brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting. 861-7028 online. Kennebec Electric. Dot com. All your electric and lighting servicing, expert installations and repairs. Kennebec Electric is who you need to call. You need to go to Legacy1160.com if you want to live stream the program on your mobile device, on your iPad, your tablet, your PC, whatever deal you got going. That is at Legacy1160.com, powered by the Harry J. Smith Company, Sanger Avenue in Waterville. If you would prefer to watch us on Facebook or on YouTube, you can certainly do that. Brought to you by... Moody's Collision Center. 708, Ken Altshuler's here. That's what we do every Wednesday. It's the Ken and Mike Hour, and also every Wednesday, it's Agree to Disagree. Phil Harriman and Ethan Strimling, our political analyst elves, will be here coming up at 808. All right, the president comes out last night, right after supper, basically, and, well, I'll let him tell you. Throughout the summer, Democrats cruelly blocked COVID relief legislation in an effort to advance their extreme left-wing agenda and influence the election. Then, a few months ago, Congress started negotiations on a new package to get urgently needed help to the American people. It's taken forever. However, the bill they are now planning to send back to my desk is much different than anticipated. It really is a disgrace. For example, among the more than 5,000 pages in this bill, which nobody in Congress has read because of its length and complexity. It's called the COVID relief bill, but it has almost nothing to do with COVID. This bill contains $85.5 million for assistance to Cambodia, $134 million to Burma, $1.3 billion for Egypt and the Egyptian military, which will go out and buy almost exclusively Russian military equipment, $25 million for democracy and gender programs in Pakistan, $505 million to Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama, $40 million for the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., which is not even open for business, $1 billion for the Smithsonian, and an additional $154 million for the National Gallery of Art. Likewise, these facilities are essentially not open. $7 million for reef fish management, $25 million to combat Asian carp, $2.5 million to count the number of amberjack fish in the Gulf of Mexico, a provision to promote the breeding of fish in federal hatcheries, $3 million in poultry production technology, $2 million to research 
the impact of down trees. $566 million for construction projects at the FBI. The bill also allows stimulus checks for the family members of illegal aliens, allowing them to get up to $1,800 each. This is far more than the Americans are given. Despite all of this wasteful spending and much more, the $900 billion package provides hardworking taxpayers with only $600 each in relief payments. And not enough money is given to small businesses and in particular restaurants whose owners have suffered so grievously. They were only given a deduction for others to use in business their restaurant for two years. This two-year period must be withdrawn, which will allow the owners to obtain financing and get their restaurants back in condition. Congress can terminate it at a much later date, but two years is not acceptable. It's not enough. Congress found plenty of money for foreign countries, lobbyists, and special interests while sending the bare minimum to the American people who need it. It wasn't their fault. It was China's fault, not their fault. I am asking Congress to amend this bill and increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. I'm also asking Congress to immediately get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary items from this legislation and to send me a suitable bill or else the next administration will have to deliver a COVID relief package. And maybe that administration will be me and we will get it done. Thank you very much. Is he wrong about any of that? Do you know one regular person, not your congressman, not your senator, not a politician, not a hack somewhere who thinks this bill, it's an omnibus bill, I know that, who thinks this bill is a good idea and that you're that they're happy about the all the money going to the Sudan and for this and that and every other thing in the Kennedy Center and the Smithsonian and not to you and me? Why is any money leaving the country right now? Any of our money, our money. Again, they play as if it's monopoly money and it doesn't belong to us, but it belongs to us. So Obviously, I'm delighted at the fact that the president came out last night. Let's hope he sticks to his guns and vetoes this. I would, of course, love it if he were the one who was the next administration to be able to fashion a proper COVID relief bill. Now, what should be interesting is to see the tap dance, to see Democrats and Republicans walk on a combination of glass and fire without any shoes on and bare feet to see if they can come up with something, or they will even attempt to. They all think it's fabulous. They all voted for it. Jared Golden, who's going to be here tomorrow, voted for it. I know he didn't like it. We've heard this story before. But you know, at some point, you got to start You got to start taking a stand for this crap. Okay. So one of the provisions in the bill was to make life better for women in Pakistan because apparently they have a hard time in Pakistan if you're a woman opening a bank account Without be, you know, I mean that sucks. All that, that stuff, but you know, you know what? That's Pakistan's problem. Let Pakistan take care of that. Here's Lindsey Graham yesterday on Fox News, defending sending millions of your taxpayer dollars to Pakistan because those women over there can't open up bank accounts without their husband's signatures. So, you know, there are things in there. The foreign aid budget is 1% of all American spending. Pakistan is a place I really worry about. (laughs) 85 countries, a woman can't open up a bank account without her husband's signature. She can't inherit property. If you're a young girl in Pakistan, life is pretty tough. So we're trying to make life better for women throughout the world. But 1% of all federal spending uh, is foreign assistance. Do you ever spend any time in your busy 24-hour day worrying about anything going on in Pakistan? Now, I don't want women in Pakistan or anywhere where else to be oppressed even a little bit. And the fact that they can't open up a bank account is absurd. And the the, the fact that they can't inherit money is absurd. But you know what? 
Make America great again. America first. Not our problem. We've spent way too much time nosing into other people's business and then throwing money at it. Lindsey Graham sounds like a douchebag here. Let's let's listen listen to this again. This is on Fox News defending sending millions of your money to Pakistan. So, you know, there are things in there. The foreign aid budget is 1% of all American spending. Pakistan is a place I really worry about. <laughs> 85 countries, a woman can't open up a bank account without her husband's signature. So what? She can't inherit property. If you're a young girl in Pakistan, life is pretty tough. So we're trying to make life better yeah. for women throughout the world. But 1% of all federal spending uh, is foreign assistance. STFU, Lindsey Graham. All right. STFU. And you should see the talking heads. There are three. One of them is Brian Kilmeade. They are doing a very poor job of hiding their disgust at what <laughs> Lindsey Graham had to say. And as well, it should be. I mean, I, I, I you want to throat punch them? I mean, there are so many. You just want to throat punch them, whether it's that douche Steny Hoyer the other day whining. About only making a hundred and whatever they think, 74 grand, or they haven't gotten a cola since 2009, or this justifying sending $10 million to Pakistan to help women open up bank accounts. And boy, Joe Biden, of course, dementia suffering pervert who likes to sniff little girls that he is. This guy is totally losing his mind. But what are his speech writers thinking yesterday? This guy is such a, he's such a Debbie Downer. That's for sure. Here we are at Christmas, and I don't want him to lie to us, but here we are at Christmas. We've got a vaccination. This is on the up and up. An old Debbie Downer slash Joe Biden yesterday, just a negative Nelly. Bob this week, and I can and I must ask them to do it again next year. But even with the changes in approach, I'm going to put in place in late January, people are still going to be getting sick and dying from COVID. One thing I promise you about my leadership during this crisis, I'm going to tell it to you straight. I'm going to tell you the truth. Right. And here's the simple truth. Our darkest days in the battle against COVID are ahead of us, not behind us. So we need to prepare ourselves to steal our spines as frustrating as it is to hear, it's going to take patience, persistence, and determination to beat this virus. There'll be no time to waste in taking the steps we need to turn this crisis around. My administration will start to do this its part on our first day in office with masking requirements, a new strategy for testing, accelerated protection, protective gear. And we're going to challenge Congress and the American people to step up immediately as well to do their part. As with the relief bill passed by Congress, there's another challenge which my administration will confront. I don't even know where to start there. He's going to ask the American people to steal their backs and step up to the challenge. Hey, numbnuts, what do you think we've been doing for the last 10 months? It's not because Congress steeled their backs and stepped up to the challenge or anybody involved in government. Who has sacrificed for the last 10 months? Americans have stepped up and taken the challenge, and they have taken a beating from people like you and Governor Janet T. Mills, the T stands for tyrant, and Dr. Nir of Shaw. And Dr. Deborah Burks and Dr. Anthony Fauci. Oh, Americans stepped up and took the challenge. We've been doing it every day. The problem is our government at every single level has not stepped up and taken the challenge. And they proved it again this week. Now, should President Trump's Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, negotiated this deal the way it went down? Of course not. It's idiotic. Now, I've seen some Democrats, and I take that with a huge grain of salt on social media, asking after the president came out last night and said what he said, where you been? Hey, dude, I saw one person. Hey, dude, 
Where you been? In responding to the president's tweet of his speech. Where's everybody been from a political standpoint? Where's where's Nancy Pelosi and her $600 been? We also have in the legislation uh, direct payments, which were not in the Republican bill, to America's working families. I would like them been, been bigger, but they are uh, significant, and they will be going out soon. You take your significant $600 check, you peasant, and get out of my sight. Don't you look at me in the eyes. Yes, I said that while wearing a $600 designer dress. Yes, I have a $24,000 freezer where I keep $35 gallons of ice cream all the time. You peasant, you lemming. Get out of my sight. We've been there. Americans accepted the challenge. And in most cases, as Governor LePage said, without any lubrication, there was no Vaseline supplied. So shut up, Nancy Pelosi. And speaking of political douchebags who need to shut up, I'll finish up the sound segment this morning with this one. And I'm going to have a great one. Santa's going to be very good to me. I can tell. I worked hard this year. That is Governor Andrew Cuomo. Another self-serving, narcissistic, craptastic politician. Santa is going to be very good to me. I can tell. I worked hard this year. I know it sucks being a governor. It sucks being rump swabbed by the mainstream media. It sucks being given a book deal to write an absurd book about your, quote, leadership, unquote, during this pandemic where thousands of elderly people were herded into nursing homes by you and killed and you walked away scot-free without any responsibility? You'll make millions off it? If there is a Santa Claus, I hope the hell you get a lump of coal for Christmas. God, these people. We have got to stop voting for these people. Andrew Cuomo, Janet Mills, Joe Biden. And let's hope that Trump does veto this coronavirus stimulus omnibus budget, whatever it is. It's a steaming pile of crap. It's a dumpster fire on wheels. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's 651. <laughs> I'm Mike Violet, and you know what? By Jesus and Rice, I'm going to have a Merry Christmas in spite of all of these politicians because I'm an American and I can. Back after this on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Entertainment News. Only two days until many get to open the Christmas present that is Wonder Woman 1984. Nothing good is born from lies. Sequel to the 2017 blockbuster starring Gal Gadot, who says this time around, Wonder Woman is a little more emo. She's very lonely. Uh, She lost all of her friends, all of her team members, uh, you know, along the years. And she doesn't want to engage with anybody because she doesn't want to experience the loss and she doesn't want them to discover that she's immortal and she doesn't old and age and all of that. Wonder Woman 1984 is in theaters and streaming on HBO Max. Out today, George Clooney's latest film. Is anyone out there? He stars in and directs the sci-fi thriller The Midnight Sky, which you can watch on Netflix. The HBO fantasy drama His Dark Materials is getting a season three production to begin next year. And hopefully he's not spending his birthday in the Upside Down. Stranger Things star Finn Wolfhard is 18 today. Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Hollywood. Ho, ho, hold up. The year is ending already and we're way behind. We've got to do something fast that we won't hit our year-end goal. So this month we're slaying prices. Don't wait for the jolly old elf. 
Because right now, Santa Joey at Colebrook Mitsubishi will give you 4000 minimum for your old sled. Drive away in a brand new 2020 Mitsubishi Mirage with no money down for 179 a month. Or choose a new 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross or Mitsubishi Outlander Sport with no money down for $299 a month. Choose our top-of-the-line model, the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander with room for seven with no money down for only $320 a month. These are purchases, not leases. That's a brand new vehicle with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited power train warranty with no down payment are other dealers roasting your chestnuts over past credit mishaps let us help you beat the holiday blues and drive home a new mitsubishi today come visit us at colbrook mitsubishi route 201 in skowhegan or visit us online at colbrookmitsubishi.com at franklin somerset federal credit union they understand that when faced with difficult and challenging times it's a comfort to know that we'll get through this together Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union is committed to keeping not only their members safe, but also their dedicated employees. They are following CDC guidelines, protocols, and social distancing at all of their facilities. They may have changed some of their usual ways of doing business, but they haven't changed how they treat their members. Their safest services are available through drive-up, ATM, telephone, easy banking, mobile banking, by phone, or appointment. Lobbies are currently open in the Skowhegan and Farmington branches, and with the holidays just around the corner, Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union has a reason to brighten your season with their holiday loan special going on now through December 31st. Just ask any of their friendly and knowledgeable loan officers in Skowhegan, Farmington, Madison, Kingfield, or Stratton for complete details or online at f-sfcu.com. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, where their most important member is you. Member NCUA. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's. Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go, take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show, take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust, and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's. Collision Centers. M O O D Y. Your kid was talking on the cell phone, drove right through your own home, sitting in the parking lot, maybe you get hit a lot, driving through the green light, suddenly your side swipe, put it in reverse, but it turned out that it was first. Take it to Moody's, take it to Moody's, collision centers. Hi, I'm CJ McKenna, Assistant Dean Enrollment at Kennebec Valley Community College. Have you been thinking about attending KVCC and need a little nudge? In my position at the college, I have the opportunity to help students begin, continue, or complete a degree. These students are just like you, many balancing multiple responsibilities in addition to their classes. Whether you want to enroll full-time, part-time, or have a conversation about your options, I am here to help. Call me at 453-KVCC and we can work together to accomplish your educational goals. Electrical repair should never be done without the knowledge of how to do it safely. Better yet, skip that stress and let Kennebec Electric and Lighting take care of it for you. Kennebec Electric has offered professional electric and lighting service and expert installation in homes and businesses for over 37 years, and they stand behind that experience with a guarantee on all their work. Kennebec Electric and Lighting. Contact them for all your electric and lighting servicing, including installations and repairs, at 861 861- 7028 or online at kennebecelectric.com. Oh, oh, oh. 656. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Mike Violet on the Mike Violet Show. And today is December 23rd. That means. Oh, yes. It means, well. Hello, Yes, happy Festivus to you and yours today. Yep, it's Festivus today. Happy Festivus. That's I I had completely forgotten. And of course, if you need to be reminded of the miracle of Festivus. Many Christmases ago, I went to buy a doll for my son. <laughs> I reached for the last one they had, but so did another man. As I rain blows upon him, I realized there had to be another way. What happened to the doll? It was destroyed. But out of that, a new holiday was born. A Festivus for the rest of us. That must have been some kind of doll. She was. 
And at the Festivus dinner, you gather your family around and tell them all the ways they have disappointed you over the past year. And is there a tree? No, instead there's a pole. Requires no decoration. I find tinsel distracting. <laughs> Frank, this new holiday of yours is scratching me right where I itch. Let's do it then. All right. Festivus is back! I'll get the pole out of the crawl space. <laughs> well, happy Festivus. What is that? Is that the pole? George, Festivus is your heritage. It's part of who you are. That's why I hate it. It's a big dinner Tuesday night at Frank's house. Everyone's invited. George, you're forgetting how much Festivus has meant to us all. I brought one of the cassette tapes. Read that poem. I can't read it. I need my glasses. You don't need glasses. You're just weak. You're weak. Leave him alone! <laughs> All right, George. It's time for the Festivus Feats of Strength. Oh, God! Get it on! No Feats of Strength! I'm a Festivus! We had some good times. <laughs> but, sir, I, I gave out the fake card because um, I don't really celebrate. Christmas. I um I celebrate Festivus. Feminists. Festivus. Sorry. And uh, I was afraid that I would be persecuted for my beliefs. They drove my family out of Bayside, sir. You making all this up too? Oh no, sir. Festivus is all too real, and I could prove it if I have to. Yeah, you probably should. The tradition of Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. Now, you're gonna hear about it. You, Kruger, my son tells me your company stinks. Oh, God. <laughs> what? We'll get yours in a minute. Kruger, you couldn't smooth a silk sheet if you had a hot date with a babe. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> And now, as Festivus rolls on, we come to the feats of strength. Not the feats of strength. Until you pin me, George, Festivus is not over. Oh, please, somebody stop this. Let's rumble! I can't do the take of Georgie. Come on, be sensible. Stop crying and fight your father. Ow! Ow, I got This is I the guess. best Festivus oh, ever! Isn't it, though? Happy Festivus! To the rest of you, Ken Altshuler will air some grievances coming up. Bill and Ethan will as well. The news is next. I'm Mike Violet. It's the Mike Violet Show. Happy Festivus. Merry Christmas from all of us here at Legacy 1160 WSKW. From the Home Auto Group Studios, Farmington Ford and Franklin Chrysler in Farmington. This is WSKW, Skowhegan, Augusta, Waterville, Legacy 1160. Oh, see, can you see my light? What so proudly behave And the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Fill the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Who were so gallant
ABC News, I'm Tom Rivers. A video message from President Trump suggesting he won't sign the $900 billion pandemic relief bill passed by Congress, insisting the $600 payments to individuals be increased to $2,000. I'm also asking Congress to immediately get rid of the wasteful and unnecessary items from this legislation. The president mostly referencing items that weren't in the COVID relief bill, but rather the larger government funding bill. As for increasing the individual payments, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeting her support, writing Democrats are ready to bring this to the floor this week by unanimous consent. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez. Concerns growing over the new variant of the coronavirus that surfaced in Britain. Health officials are trying to determine if it's as contagious as it appears to be. Both Pfizer and Moderna are testing their vaccines to make sure they're effective against the mutated virus. This is ABC News. New questions about another police raid on a wrong home, this one in South Carolina. ABC's Janae Norman says a man was forced out of his home naked by police. The video from June 2019 shows 71-year-old Jethro Devane standing in a doorway, telling police he lives there as the officer points a gun at him, though he's done nothing wrong. Who else is in here? Me. Just you? Hey, I deal with the man's side. You know, he's got the weapon. I don't. Police were reportedly searching for four kids who'd allegedly broken into a car nearby. Rock Hill Police releasing a statement saying they thought the kids could have run inside what appeared to be an abandoned residence and that Devane was detained by officers for safety. None of the officers involved have been disciplined. And evacuation orders have been lifted in northwest Washington state after a freight train hauling oil derailed, setting off a huge fire. I'm Tom Rivers, ABC News. I absolutely love my dog, but the constant shedding, not so much. But then I got a Swiffer Sweeper pet kit, and it is amazing. These super thick cloths pick up a crazy amount of hair. Just look at all that. And that was from just one swipe. And the best part? Sweeper's so much easier to maneuver than a broom or a vacuum, easily getting around chairs and under the couch. You're right. Now I can focus on you, not your shedding. Swiffer Sweeper pet kit, because shed happens. Want to hear how I almost got off the naughty list this year? I helped Santa save gazillions by having him download Capital One Shopping to his computer. Capital One Shopping instantly searches for available coupon codes and automatically applies them at checkout. You can download it too and save a bundle. You don't even need a Capital One card and it's free. So why didn't I get off the naughty list? Turns out Santa's a stickler for naughty words. <laughs> Capital One Shopping. It's kind of genius. What's in your wallet? Savings and available coupons vary. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Krasos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. President Trump is telling lawmakers they need to change their COVID-19 relief bill, suggesting he may not sign the $900 billion legislation. The president says the long-awaited bill is a disgrace and is calling on Congress to increase stimulus payments from $600 to $2,000 and get rid of wasteful and unnecessary items. The main CDC is reporting 10 new COVID-related deaths and 458 new known cases. The number of deaths is now above 300 since the start of the pandemic, and the total cases is nearing 20,000. 185 people are currently hospitalized. Governor Janet Mills has extended Maine's state of civil emergency through January 20th. In a statement, Governor Mills also reminded Mainers to remain vigilant this holiday season, saying, quote, The biggest gift we can give this holiday season is not a present under the tree or a hug to a loved one. The best gift we can give and the best gift we can receive is good health. New this morning, RSU 73, located northwest of Augusta, now gives the green light for some winter sports. The Livermore Falls advertiser reports alpine and Nordic skiing, along with basketball, cheer, and ice hockey, have all been approved. This flips the school board's decision, which went against winter sports earlier this month. In a letter, health officials put the safety of those in the school first in line, but said winter sports could happen if safety guidelines are followed. And in sports, the Celtics will tip off the new season tonight at home against the Milwaukee Bucks. The game is at 7.30. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Ho, ho, hold up. The year is ending already, and we're way behind. We've got to do something fast that we won't hit our year-end goal. So this month, we're slaying prices. Don't wait for the jolly old elf. 
Because right now, Santa Joey at Colebrook Mitsubishi will give you 4000 minimum for your old sled. Drive away in a brand new 2020 Mitsubishi Mirage with no money down for 179 a month. Or choose a new 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross or Mitsubishi Outlander Sport with no money down for $299 a month. Choose our top-of-the-line model, the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander with room for seven with no money down for only $320 a month. These are purchases, not leases. That's a brand new vehicle with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited power train warranty with no down payment are other dealers roasting your chestnuts over past credit mishaps let us help you beat the holiday blues and drive home a new mitsubishi today come visit us at colbrook mitsubishi route 201 in skowhegan or visit us online at colbrookmitsubishi.com if you've checked that gift list twice and it's got something different for every just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassaboro Town Line. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Are you worried about spending too much? Well, don't. Townline Antiques is here to help you with that, too. Because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 40, and yes, even 50% off their selection. There's always new, cool, and unique gift ideas, including things like collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and so much more. Of course, the problem is you'll not only find lots of great gift ideas, you'll come across things that you may want to take home, too. But with their December sale of up to 50% off store-wide, you can take them home, all of them, for less. So don't miss out on this santa size sale with savings of up to 50% off this December at Townline Antiques Open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 5 on Route 201 right on the Winslow Vassaboro Town Line. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Mostly sunny this morning and for today with highs in the low to mid 30s. Mostly cloudy, milder tomorrow with highs in the 40s. It will be breezy, but the winds will really pick up at night into Christmas Day. Wind gusts over 50 miles per hour are possible for Thursday night and into Friday. Mild in the 50s for Christmas Day, but with rain and strong winds. Batten down the hatches. It's clear 24 in Skowhegan, 27 in Waterville, clear skies, 26 degrees in Augusta. You are up to date from Legacy 1160 WSKW. It's like your father is on the radio every day. When I was 17, I drank some very good beer. I drank some very good beer I purchased with a fake ID. My name was Brian McKee. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Good morning, 710. It is that middle of the weekday that we call Wednesday. Yep, that's what we call it. I'm Mike Violet. It's the Mike Violet Show brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting, 861-7028, online, kennebecelectric.com. Live stream the show 24-7, 365. Or anything else on this radio station, go to legacy1160.com. And tip your hat to the Harry J. Smith Company, Sanger Avenue in Waterville, because they make it happen. Facebook Live audio and video. YouTube video and audio. Yep, we're all over that. That is brought to you by Moody's Collision. Next hour, it's Agree to Disagree with Phil Harriman and Ethan Shrimling. Hey! Happy Festivus, everyone! <laughs> and we say good morning and happy Festivus, because he's a Festivus miracle every year. He's Ken Altshuler. Good morning, Ken. Oh, I, I love Festivus as my favorite. As you know, you and I never did engage in the feats of strength. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that's because that would not have been fair. But, um, you know, airing of grievances, but do you really want to get me going this morning on the airing of grievances? Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, I, I do now that you mentioned it. That's why I made a Festivus reference there because... I mean, I think we have plenty to grieve about this morning, if you will, anyway, without the fact that it's Festivus, but it's just more inspiration than we might normally have. My concern is that I have, you know, let's go back four years ago okay, when I was contemplating uh, leaving WGAN. Ah. But by, oh, yes, I was because Hillary Clinton was going to become president. Right. I was going to have to spend four years defending her right. against, you know, you guys and Benghazi every single day. I would have been talking about emails and servers and basements and Bill Clinton and the Oval Office. And so I said, you know, self, if you want to do that for the next four years. Right. And then Donald Trump got elected. And, and you're like, like <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. No, it's no, it's not. It, no, it's not a Christmas miracle. It's a Festivus miracle. <laughs> <laughs> So I stayed, and had I not been summarily 
fired in March, I would have probably left this year because I really didn't think Donald Trump was going to get reelected, right. which means, you know, it's no fun to be having to defend the Democratic president. I mean, especially I, mean, this, I didn't really like Obama, this so dope. That was easier. So I probably would have resigned. And so then WGAN could have looked be respectful right. and honor my long tenure. <laughs> no. 19 years. No, they'd yeah. rather be classless and undignified. Exactly. So, so I, but, but, you know, we take, uh, I shouldn't give too much away, but we take a WCSH's political brew for the next two weekends in advance. Oh, okay. And one of the issues was, uh, you know, what is my prediction for the next year? And, mm-hmm. and I, I will say, I, I, w- I launched a huge attack once again on Donald Trump. And I've got to ask myself, when am I going to move on? But he hasn't moved on yet. So I can't move on because he won't move on. What do you mean move on from the election results? You mean not accept? Yes, he still, he wants to declare martial law for God's sake. Oh, he does not. He didn't say that. Did you read the report? His, Michael Flynn, and that crazy lawyer, Sidney, whatever her name is. Sidney Powell. Sidney Powell. They they have explored him declaring martial law. <laughs> well, you can't make this up. No, I, I know you can't, but I don't think there's any chance they're going to declare well, martial because law. Because that'd be treason, for God's sake. I want this, this. So my grievance, here's my grievance. Number one, Donald Trump. Go away. Don't come back ever again. Please. Go to jail, matter of fact. Lock him up. Lock him up. Lock him up. Remember that, Ken? Of course. My second grievance is for Republicans and conservatives who don't have the gonad to stand up and say, enough is enough. This is absurd. You lost the damn election. It's time to it's time to get out of the White House, pal. And 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 I, and you know what? And I equate this. Uh, with, and I know, now stick with me here. My analogy is domestic violence. You and I know that women will not end domestic violence. It's only men telling other men that the behavior is not acceptable that will put an end to domestic violence if it ever ends. It's you guys who have got to stand up to this guy. It's a Margaret Chase Smith moment. Yeah. You got to stand up and say, Ken. this is this is ridiculous. You've got to stop doing this. Oh, Ken. This is apples and manhole covers here. This is you've you've strayed off the reservation here by making that analogy. He has he has absolutely destroyed the confidence of millions of people stupid enough to support him. Excuse me, and who really believe? Are you, in this did you just did you it. did you just call me stupid? No, not everybody thinks that the election is fraudulent. <laughs> there are people like you. And Ray Richardson. Ray mm-hmm. Richardson is one who says, yeah, yeah, yeah. There He's was my brother in arms, man. Yeah. And, but he, at least you, I mean, you don't really think, do you, that Donald Trump won the election? Yes, I do. I do. No, you don't. No, I do. Based on what? Um, Based on, I don't think there is any way that a 78-year-old dementia suffering pervert who spends the entire election process locked in a basement can win an election on his own. And somehow you believe that Donald Trump in 2016 legitimately won the election? Yeah, I do. do Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, Let me ask you this. Tell me how brilliant Democrats can possibly be to cause Donald Trump to lose and not win the damn Senate. How does that happen? I don't know. You'd so have to ask them. We're smart enough. We're smart enough to fill the election to Biden, but we're too stupid to get two more Senate seats when twenty-five Republicans in the Senate were for re-election. How did we do that? How the the Senate is more important than the presidency. It's more important to have a Democratic Senate than it is to have a Democratic president. If anything, we would have rigged the election for the Senate, not for the presidency. Are you done with that particular grievance? Yes. <laughs> well, lovely day for a festivus. A festivus for the rest of the rest. <laughs> Is that it, or are there more airing of grievances? Well, well, here's another grievance I have. While you, because you asked me. Yeah. 
the vaccination. Mm-hmm. Okay, complete chaos. Yep. I mean, we don't know how many vaccinations we're going to have. We don't know when we're going to get them. We don't know who's going to get them when. We don't know which state's going to. I mean, it is absolute chaos. So we have this warp speed development of vaccination, and we can't figure out how we're going to give people it and who's going to get it and when they're going to get it. It's chaos. I don't like, I do like chaos, but this is not the complicated. And another thing, I don't think these vaccinations are going to simply make coronavirus go away. You already see the mutation in Europe. So if people think that come March or April, you know, 75% of the population is going to be inoculated and that's going to be it. Uh, guess again, I think this is going to go well into 2021. And I'm talking about September, October, November. Well, I think it'll go as long and as far as Americans allow it to go. If we want to continue to allow it to completely disrupt our lives in the form of letting politicians completely disrupt our lives, then go ahead. I'm not going to be one of those. I don't even think I'm going to get it. Now, how... Mike, 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 yeah. Mike, 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 Mike. Go ahead, bitch at me all you want to. I mean, so why would you not get the vaccination? Because there's a 99% recovery rate. There's also, you know that something like 17% of our population has gotten coronavirus? Yeah, I get that. I understand it. But also 99% recover from it. We're not in my age group. Well, it's maybe about, it's about ninety. It's ninety four percent of my age group. Are, well, and I'm sixty, so I'm I'm sure I'm ninety something. So um, you're saying you want me to die? You want me to? Have a <laughs> I mean, what would you do with well, the of, 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 of course, I want you dead. Absolutely. But is it going to be the Ray and Mike hour when I'm dead and gone? Yeah, it's just going to go back <laughs> to being the Mike hour. That's not going to be any fun for me. So no, I don't want you dead. No, thank you. All right. So um, I, I, I don't. Um, I, I, you know, it, it, the, the goalposts and the end game keep moving all the time with this. I think that those in power, whether it's Fauci, whether it's Shaw, whatever, have, have lost credibility with their claims. Their claims have pretty much been bunked, uh, debunked all the way. And I, I, I so I, 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 I know I, I I haven't gotten it yet. I get that, but I, I am I I'm simply not going to stop doing what I do, and I'm only going to I'm not going to follow the rules like they want me to follow. I'm going to travel. I'm going to see my family. I went to see my kids Sunday, and I'm going to see them again. And and I'm just not going to stop living my life because of this. And what is Justin's view on this? Um, it's funny. My son's turned into a Corona brother for sure. He wouldn't hug me Sunday. Um, he is almost militant about a mask. Um, I've lost him. He uh, He's pretty close to being written out of the will. I'm going to have to talk to you about changing my will with him. Well, he's not. He's very, uh, he's liberal. He's very smart. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, smart he's, he's moved. And Jessica, while being a nurse and being subjected, of course, to um, their view of things, and I understand where their view is, is far less strident in her views Um, she gave me a big hug, a kiss when I saw her and the same when I left her. And, uh, it was like, there was no COVID around at all. Well, listen, I, I have friends that I give a hug to even now. I don't, I don't kiss male friends. You don't kiss, you don't, you don't, you don't kiss Rob Baldacci. I'm shocked at that. No, I don't kiss John Baldacci either. No, I do not. But, but I would kiss their wives. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm not going to say anymore. I'm don't, not going to say anymore. Because I know I Rob that, Baldacci hangs on every word we say. Right. So I guess that uh, I guess that wraps up the grievances. You know, I don't think this whole thing that 2020 has been this horrendous year. I mean, it has been a tumultuous year. I'll give you that. But, you know, we make it tumultuous. It doesn't get tumultuous on its own. Well... Yes. Yes, you're right. We've made, we've allowed it to be much more tumultuous than it needed to be. And I was talking to somebody yesterday about the first few days of this. Can you remember back in March, the first few days of the pandemic, how absolutely frightened we were and how we were, it was almost like right after 9-11, we were all in the same boat and we're all in this together. And here we are nine or 10 months later, and we found out not that far into it, that we weren't all in it together. There's a group that's in it together, and then there's the rest of us. 
And once again, probably the liberals versus the Democrats. Yes. I mean, versus well, the conservatives. Yes. That's true. Yeah, it is. But that's because we also had a president who didn't wear a mask and, and had super rallies and said, this is no big deal. It's going to pass. Live life normal. I mean, that was that that was his approach to this, right? I mean, he, yeah. He, I mean, he told he told Bob Woodward it was dangerous, but he didn't tell the rest of them. Well, d- d- and again, Biden yesterday saying that our darkest days are ahead. Talk about a negative Nelly. Talk about a Debbie Downer. I mean, uh, I understand that this is serious, but to say that our darkest days are ahead of us, I'm glad Trump tried to undersell it, especially given that it really isn't something that from the numbers and the science is something that we need to worry about. Well, but we wouldn't have known what would happen if, if we had a 50 percent, 60, 70 percent contagion rate. I mean, if, if, if we don't know what would have happened if it would have accelerated like that. There's a lot of people. I mean, there's a lot of people dying, right? I mean, if you look at the chart, we are way above last April and May deaths and hospitalizations. Way the numbers are what they are. I don't doubt that. And it's awful that these people have died. But the numbers, when it comes to survival, are still what they are. They are truth. They are fact. And the bottom line is, is that a huge majority of people who get COVID-19 completely recover 100% from it. So let me, uh, we don't have much time this half hour, but what do you think about Donald Trump's view that we're not giving enough money back to people in these stimulus packs? Well, we're going to hold we're going to hold that right there because that's what I want to concentrate on is Trump coming okay. out against the COVID relief package from last night. He's Ken Altshuler. It's the Ken and Mike Hour. It continues after John Crisos, who's in for Jeff Peterson, gives us our real news update this morning, and CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor with the forecast, which is going to get crazy on Christmas Eve and Christmas Christmas Day. The Ken and Mike Hour continues on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Hi, I'm Teresa Smith, Director of Advising at Kennebec Valley Community College. For the past 25 years, it has been my privilege to help people just like you reach your educational goals. Whether you're a high school student just getting started, a parent who's always had to put your family first, or a worker looking for new skills, KVCC has something for you. And trust me, it's never too late to get started. Give me a call at 453-KVCC, and together, let's see what we can do. Hi, Seth Batty with Rockland Ford here. If you are in the market for a new SUV, the deals have never been better. I've seen 0% financing, and I've seen massive rebates, but I've never seen 0% financing and massive rebates. Until the end of the year, you can get the best of both worlds. How would you like to own a brand new 2020 Ford Explorer for $6,000 off MSRP and 0% interest for only $4.99 a month with no money down? I repeat, you can own a brand new Ford Explorer for only only $4.99 a month with no money down. Or how about a brand new Ford Escape for only $19,999 or $2.99 a month with no money down? Yeah, that's right. I said it. Own a brand new Ford Escape for only $19,999 or $2.99 a month with no money down. I've been in the business for quite some time now, and I've never seen deals better than this. Come on down to Rockland Ford off Route 1 in Thomaston or call us today. Deals are with qualified credit while supplies last and customer must trade in a vehicle. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go, take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's Collision Center. M O. Your kid was talking on the cell phone, drove right through your own home, sitting in the parking lot, maybe you get hit a lot, driving through the green light, suddenly your side swipe, put it in reverse, but it turned out that it was first. Take it to Moody's, take it to Moody's, collision center, take it to Moody's. When you make the right decision, it feels good. Like picking the perfect accent rug or choosing a good night's sleep over an all-night crime show binge. It feels really good to make the right insurance decision, too. That's why I'm here to help. I'm State Farm Agent January PV here to help you select the right protection. 
I make sure that you understand your coverages so you'll know what to expect if the unexpected happens. With me, State Farm Agent January PV, it's easy to make the right choice. Just give me a call, 230-8365. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, it's Doug and Dan from Generators of Maine in Belgrade. Are you working from home? Will your children be home doing schoolwork? And you know how important it is to have access to the reliable power source. That's why you need a Kohler generator from Generators of Maine. Kohler generators deliver reliable power whenever yours goes out. And we're always happy to offer delivery and installation. Get prepared today for those upcoming power outages with a Kohler generator from Generators of Maine. Stop by our location in Belgrade. Visit online at generatorsofmaine.com and like us on Facebook. The holidays are the best times to spend with those we love as we share memories and create new ones. But if you do plan on toasting to good times with family and friends, remember, it's never a good idea to drink and drive. If you're planning on having a drink this Christmas, please protect your friends and your community by designating a driver or calling a cab. That way, everyone returns home safely. This message brought to you by Delta Ambulance. Compassion, leadership, excellence. That's Delta Ambulance. Hey, Strim, do you remember when politicians used to speak to each other with respect? I'm not sure. What are you talking about, Phil? You know, a time before Twitter when we didn't call each other moon bats and knuckle dragons. You know something? I, I do think my great-grandfather mentioned something about that. <laughs> Wasn't that when you first served in the Senate? Very funny. But you know what? Now that you mention it, it does seem like no one is willing to simply agree to disagree anymore. Agree to disagree? Hey, that would be a pretty good title for a radio program with two experienced politicians speaking respectfully on the latest issue. <laughs> yeah, I wish I knew a couple of guys who could pull that off. Yeah, me too. Phil Harriman and Ethan Strimling will agree to disagree. Thank you very much. Phil, a Republican, is a former town councilor and state senator from Yarmouth. And Ethan, a Democrat, <laughs> yeah, is the former mayor and state senator from Portland. It's Agree to Disagree on the Mike Violet Show every Wednesday at 808 on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Good morning. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. President Trump is telling lawmakers they need to change their COVID-19 relief bill, suggesting he may not sign the $900 billion legislation. The president says the long-awaited bill is a disgrace and is calling on Congress to increase stimulus payments from $600 to $2,000 and get rid of wasteful and unnecessary items. The main CDC is reporting 10 new COVID-related deaths and 458 new known cases. The number of deaths is now above 300 since the start of the pandemic, and the total cases is nearing 20,000. 185 people are currently hospitalized. Governor Janet Mills has extended Maine's state of civil emergency through January 20th. In a statement, Governor Mills also reminded Mainers to remain vigilant this holiday season, saying, quote, The biggest gift we can give this holiday season is not a present under the tree or a hug to a loved one. The best gift we can give and the best gift we can receive is good health. New this morning, RSU 73, located northwest of Augusta, now gives the green light for some winter sports. The Livermore Falls advertiser reports alpine and Nordic skiing, along with basketball, cheer, and ice hockey, have all been approved. This flips the school board's decision, which went against winter sports earlier this month. In a letter, health officials put the safety of those in the school first in line, but said winter sports could happen if safety guidelines are followed. And in sports, the Celtics will tip off the new season tonight at home against the Milwaukee Bucks. The game is at 7.30. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. I'm a hiker. And I am Sam. The Sportsman's Alliance of Maine is a champion of our rights to fully enjoy Maine as we like. Support the preservation of our proud outdoor heritage by becoming a member at sportsmansallianceofmaine.org today. The holidays may be here, but many of us still have work to do. And a coyote tractor from Whittemore & Sons can move that big pile of snow, transport that wood, and take care of all your other heavy-duty winter jobs in no time. Coyote tractors are some of the toughest, most powerful, fuel-efficient, technologically advanced tractors ever built. With all their uses, a coyote tractor is the gift that keeps on giving all year long. Even Santa has a tractor on his wish list this year. Check out the full line of tough and versatile compact tractors, attachments, implements, and accessories at Whittemore & Sons, your coyote tractor dealer, with dependable sales and service for over 50 years. If you have questions or want to schedule a pickup, just call us at 207-474-2591. Run ahead of the pack with a Coyote Tractor from Whittemore & Sons on the Wadova Road in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family who cares. Whittemore & Sons, outdoor power equipment. 
Don't let the year end without using the HSA dollars in your account. Contact Kennebec Eye Care in Waterville. Wouldn't you love to have new glasses, sunglasses, or computer glasses? How about a backup pair for emergencies? An extra pair to leave at work? Dr. Peter Parody, Dr. Kerry Kaplan, and Dr. Leslie Sobeck will expertly fit you with correct eyeglasses or contacts. So contact Kennebec Eye Care today, 216 Main Street in Waterville, online at KennebecEyeCare.com. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Mostly sunny this morning and for today with highs in the low to mid 30s. Mostly cloudy, milder tomorrow with highs in the 40s. It will be breezy but the winds will really pick up at night into christmas day wind gusts over 50 miles per hour are possible for thursday night and into friday mild in the 50s for christmas day but with rain and strong winds that inflatable christmas snoopy you've got on the front lawn you might want to anchor it down we've got sunshine now 24 in skowhegan 27 in waterville sunshine 27 degrees as well in augusta you're up to date from Legacy 1160 WSKW. In a state where common sense is a lost art, he's basically your father. He didn't crawl out from under no rocks. He didn't have no tails. We didn't come from monkeys. You ate the stick pink on me. <laughs> it's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Good morning, 733. Merry Christmas and happy Festivus because it is Wednesday It's December 23rd, 2020. That is Festivus. I'm Mike Violet. The Mike Violet Show is brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting, 861-7028, online at kennebecelectric.com. That is live stream the show, legacy1160.com. That's powered by the Harry J. Smith Company. Find us on Facebook audio and video, Legacy Facebook page, my Facebook page, John's Facebook page, American Women Who Bear Arms page, the Freedom Pep Rally page, and, of course, on YouTube, just type in Legacy 1160, our video and audio is brought to you by Moody's Collision Centers. The bill they are now planning to send back to my desk is much different than anticipated. It really is a disgrace. It's the Ken and Mike Hour. Ken, it's a disgrace. Do we have you and President Trump finding some common ground here on that COVID uh, relief bill? Now, you know better than that. Come on. You think that's a good bill? First of of all, Donald Trump has been you to negotiate the bill. He's completely uninvolved in the negotiation of the bill. He has been his administration negotiate the bill with Pelosi and McConnell. And then he, of course, says, I don't like it. And by the way, the reason he doesn't like it is because Joe Biden said, this is not enough money, but don't worry. As soon as I get in office, we'll give you more money. So now he's got to give you more money. Look, you know, let me ask you a question. And I don't mean to, to uh, minimize what $600 I mean, I, I understand you know, my electric bill. I know what $600 can pay. But does $600 really solve the problem of somebody who is in dire financial no, straits? No, of course not. Right. So it's giving me, it's throwing money at the problem. I, I think what's, I mean, you know, I think who needs the relief is this, this particularly, you know, the tourist industry, restaurants in particular. Mm-hmm. So I'm all for a stimulus package. I think sending Americans a check for 600 bucks, it, I don't think it really, first of all, causes, all they're going to do is print more money. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it's not as if, you know, it's just it's causing inflation. But stop, stop, it's, stop, 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 stop. Time out. T.O., baby. What about the billions in this bill that are going out of the country? The stupid, crazy stuff for helping Pakistani women get their driver's licenses. All of that crazy stuff. All right, the $600 is a slap in the face even more so, though, Ken, when you factor in all of the money that we're sending out of the country that's included in both the stimulus combo bill with the um, the budget bill. It's absurd. Well, I'm surprised you didn't mention all the environmental uh, elements. All right, go <laughs> ahead. Feel free. I can run them all down for you if you want. I no, have a list right so here. That, yeah, and that's what happens. That, what happens is every time you get a bill passed, it has all this miscellaneous stuff in it that has nothing to do with the bill. And I don't, I, I, you know me, I don't, I'm not an anarchist, but I don't think the way that Congress behaves is, is good in the long run. So, no, I don't support this stimulus, this stimulus package. And look, at your point is very well taken about Trump having Steve Mnuchin negotiate this deal come to a deal and 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 not get what the administrative uh, administration wanted here 
Uh, it's absurd. Uh, I completely yeah. agree with you there. The the you know the art of the deal guy uh, didn't get the deal done right, and now he wants to go back, which I'm glad about. Don't get me wrong here. I'm glad about, but your point is very well taken. Yeah, but, but it's not that he didn't get what he wanted. He didn't tell me what he wanted. I know. He just said, go negotiate, and then come back and, no, I don't like it. If, you know, I'm, and, and what does he like about it? He wants couples to get $4,000. Well, I mean, $4,000 is much better than $1,200. I'll give you that. And, and certainly $4,000 may make a dent in the next few months for you. And so I understand that. That's strong money, but that's a little more healthy money. But in the long run, it does nothing. It doesn't help the businesses. It doesn't help, you know, the infrastructure. It doesn't do anything. So, so and by the way, you know, the stock market is doing great. It's the, that's the only real part of the economy right now. I mean, the unemployment numbers are climbing. The uh, applications for unemployment benefits is climbing. Joe Biden is inheriting some major headaches. Have you also noticed the gas prices are up about a quarter here in the last couple yeah. of weeks? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So I, no, I'm not. It's not to me. It's not rational. It's just throwing money at the problem, and that, and it's going to cause inflation. It's just printing more money. And yeah, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of foreign aid. You know that. You know, I'm. I'm not an isolationist, but I'm still in non-interventionist. Well, right now, we you know we we need to be more isolationist and more non-interventionist than ever, especially with this. And when you're farming out money like they're doing here, and you get Lindsey Graham yesterday on TV defending helping out women in Pakistan get a driver's license, and <laughs> I mean, he literally went on TV and 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 listen, listen to this. The foreign aid budget is 1% of all American spending. Pakistan is a place I really worry about. 85 countries, a woman can't open up a bank account without her husband's signature. She can't inherit property. If you're a young girl in Pakistan, life is pretty tough. So we're trying to make life better for women throughout the world. But Do you spend any part of your day, Ken, worrying about the plight of women in Pakistan? Of course I do. Every every hour on the hour, I, I say I mean, that is friend. just a bizarre thing to say with a straight face. It almost sounds like Saturday Night Live satire there. <laughs> well, Lindsey Graham is not a rocket scientist. No, he's not. <laughs> I mean, he's, you know, I mean, come on. He's, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Hypocrisy. I mean, come on. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I get that. He's a politician. It's in their fabric. Yeah. So I, so, so, so listen, these are bizarre days. Um, so, have you looked at Donald Trump's excellent pardon, by the way? Uh, have I looked at his what? His pardon, the pardon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw I saw the list, and I also saw Senator Angus King whining like a baby about the pardons, too. So I figure if King is whining, Trump must have done something good. Well, he's pardoning everybody who pled guilty after the Mueller report. Right. Getting pardoned. He, he pardoned uh, four Border Patrol guys who killed an undocumented uh, a land and then right. covered it up. I mean, he's, he's, he's pardoning people who he pardoned this Texas uh, representative who was convicted of like 10 fraud uh, felony charges. I mean, look, I, look, I, the whole pardon power. I hate the whole thing. It's absurd. It's absurd. It should be done away with. It's awful. Every president does it and it's despicable. I mean, it came from the history of the pardon is that it was, it was supposed to be a check and balance on the corrupt court system mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like really I mean, I think we should have that's the fox chamber. garden the hen house right there yeah i mean so yeah and look and you know i thought that uh bill clinton's uh a part of mark which was absolutely outrageous I, I mean it's just those those are the kind of things you know that just you know make you should make you think that politicians can't be trusted now, news flash <laughs> breaking news ken altshuler says politicians can't be trusted we'll have details at eight but that includes donald trump oh, which yes. you guys seem to yes, like I, a lot i agree you know so so yeah i'm uh it's uh and by the way he hasn't even got into his family yet just wait till he pardoned you know, Joe Kushner. Well, I was waiting for him to, uh, 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 you know, pardon himself or put up, you know, put do, some. I'm telling you, put, he's going to, he's going to do that. Good. Fine. He can't pardon himself. <laughs> you can't pardon yourself. God. Are you, you do, is there not, is there not any part of you that just can't wait till he's out of office? No, because I consider what's taking his place. The dolt who's taking his place. He's Chauncey Gardner. What do you think about? 
how many rounds of golf he played. I don't care. How many rounds of golf have you played? You know, I don't care. Less than he has. <laughs> I don't care. I simply don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Um, Are you one of the ones complaining about Barack Obama playing golf? Yes. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> remember, remember the good old days when Donald Trump said, I won't have time to play golf. Right. As much as, yes. you know, in the, in yes, the he tweeted out, you know, every tweet, every tweet has come back to haunt him. Believe me, prior to his presidency. By the way, did you hear that he averaged something like 18 tweets a day for four years? Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> That's 18 more than you. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't even know how to do it. I mean, you I, you are I'm, so challenged. Uh, for somebody who does like technology like you do, your inability to actually operate it is so sweet and cunning. You know, I mean, it you really keep is. Tell, you, keep telling, you keep telling me how I'm supposed to do hashtag or yeah. ads and stream live, and I know you keep sending it to me, and I keep I don't even know where you, it goes when you send it. To I, do, I, I don't know how you subsist. And now, of course, I mean, you have to practice law by Zoom and, you know, you, you know, Facebook, uh, Facebook, uh, uh, FaceTime. I can't even say it. I mean, and your daughter, you know, both of your daughters, once in, you know, uh, I don't know if Amy's doing a lot of television anymore, but she certainly is very techie. And the other one, that that's that's her life, for God's sakes. And none of it has rubbed off on you. No, they laugh at me. They scoff at me. They have no respect for the old man. No, they don't. <laughs> but listen, yesterday, I had a court hearing yesterday morning by Zoom. Yeah. And they had to make me the host because nobody could figure out <laughs> how to do how to do breakout rooms except me. <laughs> that is very, very strange. Yeah. So I was the most tech savvy. And, and frankly, uh, the judge in the case was fairly, you know, he's in his 40s. Right. Yeah, so he's a young buck so, who should know this stuff. They grew up with you these. See, things. so you know, there's still no life in these these old legs. Um, are the judges when you do a Zoom court hearing? Are they wearing the robe and all that stuff? They are, and they're wearing masks too because, they, because the because the clerk. And, oh, they're in a courtroom. Okay. okay. Yeah, and, right. and and you know, it's really interesting because you really don't you can't pick up the signal. I mean, you know, when a judge is. Or when I'm asking, or when the jerk, or when the the judge wants me to move on, or what you know, so picking up those facial um, symbols and signals are really important, and it, it's completely diminished. And and if your client happens to be wearing a mask because you're in the same room together or something, right? The judge can't see those facial expressions. I it is really a different way of trying cases, and I think it really diminishes the the nonverbal communication. Yeah, uh, I can see where you might lose something there. It's it's a uh, you know it's a def definitely a different dynamic. Now, there hasn't been uh, some sort of like Jeffrey Tubin incident where somebody masturbated on the Zoom court hearing yet, right? <laughs> no, but I did. Uh, I did. Uh, I was wearing a jacket and shirt and tie, and but no pants. And, and no, but I did stand up and show them I was wearing sweatpants because right. I mean, after all. And no shoes. We know you weren't yeah, wearing shoes. Way, remember those good old days when you and I worked together in the studio we, and we would glare at each other. See, we knew when we ticked off each other, which didn't happen yeah. often. Yeah. Yeah. By the yeah. way, the, uh, the ad you have for Agree to Disagree, that's a very nice ad. Do you have one of those for us? Um, I don't, as a matter of fact. We need to, you know, after the first of the year, we'll record a promo and yeah, I'll have the big... Yeah, because I feel a little slighted. Yeah, you'll have the big voice. Well, I threw, you know, I threw uh, Phil Harriman, I threw him a bone, you know, once in a while. Well, but, isn't it more Ethan? By the way, do you think, because, you know, uh, so Ethan believes, I don't know if he said this on your show yet, that somebody made for like either Janet Mills or Jared Golden or Shelly Pingley will not run in 2022. Do you... I'm not sure if you think that's true or not, but do you see Ethan running for office again? Um, the only thing I could see him running for would be that Senate seat that he held in Portland once because he actually won that. Um, I think uh, he is too polarizing to actually run for mayor again and win. Um, but he, does he know that? I mean, does he recognize that? I think he does. Really? Yeah, I think he does. I think he, I think he does recognize his limitations. Um, and and they, they, they are many when it comes to running for office. But you just had Portland pass four extremely I know. liberal His, referendum. Yeah. So maybe 
would you sit there if you were, because by the way, he says he's not running again. Right. Okay. But he, you know, he's a politician. He's got, I mean, Portland's a huge liberal base. So you're right. The Senate from uh, Portland would be easy for him, probably. Um, it's interesting because I just don't, I don't see you able, I don't see politicians able to get rid of that bug that easily. Well, and, and the interesting dynamic I think that there is there, Ken, with swimming in Portland is, all right, he gets voted out of office. He finishes third between behind Kate Snyder and Spencer Thibodeau. He finishes third, and then the next year, the city behind progressive Portland, which he and Steve Beal are behind, enacts these passes, the city, pa- people, yeah. the people pass basically Ethan Strimling authored legislation. So he gets rejected by them personally, but yet they embrace all of the stuff that he wants to do. Go figure. Well, go figure. Snyder, and when I say she's an attractive candidate, I just don't mean physically. She's, she's a she's hot, att- she's the hottest mayor in Maine for sure. Well, but it's more than that. She, <laughs> she did come off as being uh, accessible, uh, collaborative, reasonable. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, she was an attractive candidate in terms of her presentation very smart. I mean, frankly, when the five candidates were in the studio, I was very impressed with her presentation. And frankly, I endorsed her. I mean, I, I just thought that she was a breath of fresh air, to be honest with you. Yeah. So, so but I, I, I'm curious because, and, and uh, Betsy Sweet kind of suggested she would not be interested in running again. I just, I mean, it's interesting. I don't, how do you go from running for everything to running for nothing? Um, yeah, I, th- th- that's very true. I mean, we're going through it up here with Craig Hickman, who a uh, state representative, the black gay organic farmer who's a state representative, but who isn't anymore. He ran for secretary of state, lost that. Now he's going to run for that state Senate seat that Shanna Bellows vacated. So, I mean, it's like eventually he's going to run for road commissioner, which I think he should win. You know, Phil Harriman wasn't so uh, on the fringe sometimes. He'd actually probably be a pretty good governor. Oh, he'd be a great. I'd vote for Phil and support Phil in a second. I wish he would. Don't tell him. Don't tell him I said that. Um. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's coming up in about fifteen minutes. I might mention it in there. Yeah. I. I don't. Uh, you know. I shouldn't have said that. So he is. You know. He sometimes shocks me how conservative he is. Sometimes he's more conservative than you are. I really. Well, I've not heard that. My. my oh, I. He's. He has made some. He. He has. He has defended Trump in a different way than you. But he's defended some of Trump's things that have been shocking to me. Really? You've yeah. been shocked by them? Well, not overly shocked, but I yeah. have had shock treatment. Like Tom <laughs> Eagle could not forget. <laughs> well, <laughs> How I can... do you like that? How do you like that reference? Wow, that is a very old reference. You're going back to the 1972, for you kids out there, you're going back to the 1972 presidential campaign um, when George McGovern originally selected Tom Eagleton, who was the senator from a senator from Mississippi or Missouri, I forget which one, Missouri. Missouri. Um, who it came out after the selection to be VP had had electric shock treatments, and eventually he was forced off the ticket. For whom? Was it a Nelson Rockefeller? No, it was Sergeant Shriver. Oh, he- <laughs> Sergeant Shriver. No, wrong party, my friend. Don't you remember McGovern? Oh, that's right. I mean, he, uh, he became Rock vice president was- under yeah. Gerald Ford when Gerald yeah. Ford got bumped up after Nixon don't quit. Don't you remember McGovern saying that he supports Tom Eagleton a thousand percent? Right, except I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and three days later, he bought the ticket. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of so that's the, the kind of you want somebody having your back like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Three days later, you yeah. get off the ticket. All right. <laughs> Yeah. You you and your shock treatments, you you go back to the funny farm with the men in the white coats, and I'll get some I'll I'll settle for a mediocre Kennedy relation here, you know? By the way, I I stayed in line in Ann Arbor for eight hours I know. to vote for uh, George <laughs> McGovern after Nixon was declared the winner. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? You you talk about fraudulent elections, by the way. I don't know if I that makes you dedicated or stupid. Well, and you remember the Michigan um, voting machines all broke down. It was like a yeah, three day j- just like 2020. Yeah, cool. But they would declare the victor uh, before the polls closed on the West Coast. They didn't care. <laughs> I, know. You know? I know. So those are the good old days. Hey, so you got a Touche Pie coming for Christmas Eve tomorrow or something like that? No. No? But, you know, I'm glad you brought this up. First of all, I want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. And the same to you and yours. And I want to tell you, and I mean this a heartfelt, one of the things I'm very thankful for is that we were able to do this hour after my summary dismissal of the WGA. 
Yes, yeah, so am I. Like uh, so am I. I mean, uh, the, this is, um, uh, it. Uh, you know, from, from bad sometimes comes good. And I love this. I look forward to this hour. It's a fun hour. It's love, I love connecting with you. You and I always had, dare I say it, chemistry. We did. And uh, I think you have a great show. I'm really glad you, uh, you, you do this show. I think it's great. I listen to it very frequently. I never turned on WGAN again after March. Never, never listen to it. Mm-hmm. We, 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 I love doing the show. It's great. Well, so, and, and and we're delighted to have you here, obviously, and the listeners are too. And and I hear from them frequently, whether it's by you know text, electronic messages, or you know seeing people out on the streets. What we had was great. What we have now is equally as great. We picked up right where we left off, which I knew we would because we just had it from the day that I walked in and did that audition with you. It was just there. And it's never changed. It's 16 years later, and it's the same feeling for me. And as long as I'm here and making the decisions, you're going to be on the show, provided you want to be. Well, unless somebody fires me, which could happen. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> I I know you'll be incredibly disappointed to lose the huge paycheck and benefits you get from us. So, hey, listen, it's probably the it's probably the best pay I receive for anything I do at seven o'clock in the morning. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll we'll keep that in context, if you know what I'm saying. So, what plans? You know, just quiet Christmas for you guys. Well, we we have Christmas Eve dinner at our house. What are you having? Uh, uh, well, you know, Amy made this ham for Thanksgiving that was just—I mean, the best ham. And I'm not that big of a ham fan. Yeah, I love. I'm it. telling you, this ham was out of this world. So I begged her to make it. Chelsea has become an idiot savant when it comes to making pie. <laughs> like and you are with making, like you are with laying floor tile. <laughs> exactly. And she's making uh, she now has to make three pecan pies because my grandson Tucker eats one by himself. Nice. So uh, and I'm gonna probably cook on the grill, maybe some uh, New York strip or something. Um, and then on Christmas morning we go over to Amy's house, which is across the street. Yeah. So it's got a long drive. So you're not breaking and, any of uh, General Mills travel restrictions? No, it's going to be basically. It's going to be the second of it. Okay, and that's and, and you. I assume you're going to go see the king. The king and I will be together. Uh, Tuche pies. Tomorrow's his birthday, number ninety-seven, of course. So uh, Tuche pies and birthday cake, and then on Christmas Day, it is Chinese food, baby. We're going to be just like Jews. Oh my god! And have Chinese food. <laughs> You've turned into a Jew. After all these years, I finally managed to influence you. Now you're going to be a bad Jew. Yeah, well, it's that's what I was going to say. It's going to be a bad Jew. There's going to be egg foo young and chicken chow mein for everybody, baby. You know, I think you'd be a better Jew than me, to be honest. Well, it wouldn't take much. Believe me, I would have to put, oh, yeah, I'd have to put very little effort into it. That's I'd for sure. I'd love to see you having little curls on, you know, come down the side of your head and a well, yarmulke. I'd love to see that. <laughs> well, perhaps that's something we can do in the new year. You know, we'll see what happens there. But Merry Christmas to you and yours, Ken. It's a delight to have you on the show. We look forward to talking to you again next week after Christmas. It'll be our last show of the year. And it'll be our prediction for 2021. Exactly. Ken, thanks, my friend. Merry Christmas. Take care, pal. All right. There he is, Ken Altshuler. My little Jewish leprechaun. My Jewish elf. 756. Strimling and Harriman. Harriman and Strimling. It's agree to disagree. That's coming up after the top of the hour. First, though, world to national news from ABC. Real news update, CBS 13's John Crisos in for Jeff Peterson this morning. Lexi's got the forecast. See you on the other side. I'm Mike Violet on Legacy 1160 WSKW. At Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, they understand that when faced with difficult and challenging times, it's a comfort to know that we'll get through this together. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union is committed to keeping not only their members safe, but also their dedicated employees. They're following CDC guidelines, protocols, and social distancing at all of their facilities. They may have changed some of their usual ways of doing business, but they haven't changed how they treat their members. Their safest services are available through drive-up, ATM, telephone, easy banking, mobile banking, by phone, or appointment. Lobby
Rockies are currently open in the Skowhegan and Farmington branches. And with the holidays just around the corner, Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union has a reason to brighten your season with their holiday loan special going on now through December 31st. Just ask any of their friendly and knowledgeable loan officers in Skowhegan, Farmington, Madison, Kingfield, or Stratton for complete details or online at f-sfcu.com. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, where their most important member is you. Member NCUA. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's. Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go. Take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust, and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. M O O D Y. Your kid was talking on the cell phone, drove right through your own home, sitting in the parking lot. Maybe you get hit a lot, driving through the green light. Suddenly your side swipe, put it in reverse, but it turned out that it was first. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. If you've checked that gift list twice and it's got something different for everyone on it, just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassalboro Townline. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Are you worried about spending too much? Townline Antiques is here to help with that too. Because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 40, and some even 50% off their selection. There's always new cool and unique gift ideas, including collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and so much more. Of course, the problem is you'll not only find lots of great gift ideas, you'll come across things that you might want to take home too. But with their December sale of up to 50% off store-wide, you can take them all home for less. So don't miss out on the Santa size sale with savings up to 50% off this December at Townline Antiques, open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 5, Route 201, right on the Winslow Vassalboro Town Line. From the Home Auto Group Studios, Farmington Ford and Franklin Chrysler in Farmington, this is WSKW, Skowhegan, Augusta, Waterville, Legacy 1160. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glow, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? ABC News, I'm Faith Abube. In an unexpected move, President Trump now says he won't sign the latest COVID relief bill. The president says he wants Americans to get bigger stimulus checks, even though Republicans and those in his own administration fought against that. ABC's Rachel Scott. Democrats say they will take Trump up on his offer and do what they've been proposing for months, pass a bill that would put $2,000 in the pockets of Americans. Republicans refuse to budge on the price tag of the roughly $900 billion stimulus package. And now one of the president's closest allies, Senator Lindsey Graham, calling the bill imperfect, but saying the sooner the bill becomes law, the better. No presidential signature means any checks Americans were hoping to receive next week now on hold. California's healthcare system is buckling under the strain of the coronavirus outbreak. 
The state's largest hospital system says increasingly exhausted staff are now attending to COVID patients stacked up in hallways and in conference rooms. This is ABC News. The coronavirus having a huge impact on the total number of deaths across the country this year. The CDC says the increase of deaths in the U.S. by at least 400,000 people in 2020 could bring the lifespan down for the year by as many as three full years. The U.S. recorded more than three million deaths this year for the first time ever. COVID-19 followed heart disease and cancer as the leading causes. Other causes were also up, like pneumonia, diabetes, and dementia. Experts think those increases could have links to COVID-19. The final death toll is also expected to show a big increase in the number of drug overdose deaths. Brian Clark, ABC News. The city of Columbus has relieved a police officer of duty after that officer was involved in the deadly shooting early yesterday of a 47-year-old black man. Neither of the officers on the scene activated their body cameras until after the shooting, but a feature of the camera actually captured video of the shooting itself. However, no audio was recorded. Faith Abube, ABC News. Right now, Allstate has almost as many ways to save as there are types of music. Save for being a new customer. Save more for adding DriveWise. And save even more for driving safely. Visit Allstate.com or contact your local agent to get a quote. Find out how much you can save today. Allstate, now that should be music to your ears. Not available in every state. New customer savings based on early signing discount. DriveWise is an optional feature. Savings vary based on how you buy. Subject to terms and conditions. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. I'm Dr. Baker, an ER physician. If you're having leg pain, swelling, or redness, but haven't talked to your doctor yet, don't wait. This could be deep vein thrombosis, a blood clot which could travel to your lungs and lead to a pulmonary embolism, which could cause chest pain or discomfort or difficulty breathing and be deadly. Your symptoms could mean something serious, so don't wait. Talk to a doctor right away by phone, online, or in person. Brought to you by Bristol-Myers Squibb and Pfizer. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Krasos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. President Trump is telling lawmakers they need to change their COVID-19 relief bill, suggesting he may not sign the $900 billion legislation. The president says the long-awaited bill is a disgrace and is calling on Congress to increase stimulus payments from $600 to $2,000 and get rid of wasteful and unnecessary items. The main CDC is reporting 10 new COVID-related deaths and 458 new known cases. The number of deaths is now above 300 since the start of the pandemic, and the total cases is nearing 20,000. 185 people are currently hospitalized. Governor Janet Mills has extended Maine's state of civil emergency through January 20th. In a statement, Governor Mills also reminded Mainers to remain vigilant this holiday season, saying, quote, The biggest gift we can give this holiday season is not a present under the tree or a hug to a loved one. The best gift we can give and the best gift we can receive is good health. New this morning, RSU 73, located northwest of Augusta, now gives the green light for some winter sports. The Livermore Falls advertiser reports alpine and Nordic skiing, along with basketball, cheer, and ice hockey, have all been approved. This flips the school board's decision, which went against winter sports earlier this month. In a letter, health officials put the safety of those in the school first in line, but said winter sports could happen if safety guidelines are followed. And in sports, the Celtics will tip off the new season tonight at home against the Milwaukee Bucks. The game is at 7.30. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Ho, ho, hold up. The year is ending already, and we're way behind. We've got to do something fast that we won't hit our year-end goal. So this month, we're slaying prices. Don't wait for the jolly old elf, because right now, Santa Joey at Colebrook Mitsubishi will give you 4000 minimum for your old sled. Drive away in a brand new 2020 Mitsubishi Mirage with no money down for 179 a month. Or choose a new 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross or Mitsubishi Outlander Sport with no money down for $299 a month. Choose our top-of-the-line model, the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander with room for seven with no money down for only $320 a month. These are purchases not leases. That's a brand new vehicle with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty with no down payment. Are other dealers roasting your chestnuts over past credit mishaps? Let us help you beat the holiday blues and drive home a new Mitsubishi today. Come visit us at Colebrook Mitsubishi Route 201 in Skowhegan or visit us online at colebrookmitsubishi.com. When you make the right decision, it feels good, like picking the perfect accent rug or choosing a good night's sleep over an all-night crime show binge. It feels really good to make the right insurance decision, too. That's why I'm here to help. I'm State Farm Agent January PV here to help you select the right protection. 
I make sure that you understand your coverages so you'll know what to expect if the unexpected happens. With me, State Farm Agent January PV, it's easy to make the right choice. Just give me a call, 230-8365. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The holidays are the best times to spend with those we love as we share memories and create new ones. But if you do plan on toasting to good times with family and friends, remember, it's never a good idea to drink and drive. If you're planning on having a drink this Christmas, please protect your friends and your community by designating a driver or calling a cab. That way, everyone returns home safely. This message brought to you by Delta Ambulance. Compassion, leadership, excellence. That's Delta Ambulance. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Mostly sunny this morning and for today with highs in the low to mid 30s. Mostly cloudy, milder tomorrow with highs in the 40s. It will be breezy, but the winds will really pick up at night into Christmas Day. Wind gusts over 50 miles per hour are possible for Thursday night and into Friday. Mild in the 50s for Christmas Day, but with rain and strong winds. Sounds like Phil ought to take that inflatable Grinch off his front front lawn or at least hanker it, uh, anchor it down a little bit better. Clear skies. We've got 26 in Skowhegan, 27 in Waterville. It is clear. We have 28 degrees here in Augusta. You're up to date from Legacy 1160 WSKW. You think it? He says it. Yada, yada, yada. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Good morning. It's 808, that middle of the weekday that we call Wednesday. Mike Violet here on Wednesday, December 23rd, 2020. Yes, it is Festivus, and the airing of the grievances is coming up, believe me, with Phil and Ethan here in a minute. The show brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting, 861-7028 online. At KennebecElectric.com, you can live stream the show 24-7, the station 24-7, 365, Legacy1160.com. That's brought to you by the Harry J. Smith Company in Waterville. And you can also see us and hear us on Facebook Live and YouTube, Facebook.com slash Legacy1160WSKW, or simply go to YouTube. And in the search box, type in Legacy1160. Presto, there we are. Brought to you by... Booty's Collision Centers. There's fire and ice, oil and water, black and white, Republican and Democrat. Phil Harriman and Ethan Strimling will agree to disagree. Thank you very much. It's Agree to Disagree on the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160 WSKW. All righty, and we <laughs> say good morning to the principals involved. Phil Harriman, Ethan Strimling. Gentlemen, good morning to both of you. And not only Merry Christmas, boys, but Happy Festivus as well. Oh, I'm so excited. How are you, Michael and Ethan? I'm fine. Ethan, I'm happy Festivus, great. man. How are you guys doing? We're, we're, I, hey, as fine as I can be doing here, it's Festivus, it's Christmas in a couple of days, everything is going good, and my president, Donald Trump, came out last night, my president came out last night and said this. The bill they are now planning to send back to my desk is much different than anticipated. It really is a disgrace. So the president here, Ethan Strimling, is siding with your girl, Nancy Pelosi. What in the wide, (laughs) wide world of sports is going on? I know. Isn't this awesome? uh, You know, I I wish that he had gotten this engaged back in uh, October instead of trying to ram through right wing Supreme Court justices. We might have actually had a better package. But I'm glad to see him stepping up. I'll see what he does next. Nancy Pelosi, of course, is ready to past the $2,000 uh, bump that he's saying that he wants for every family. Democrats have been ready to do that forever. Look, the bill's got a lot of really good stuff in it. If you're a uh, family right now, you get the 600 bucks. If you're unemployed, there's another $6,500 available to you. There's additional food assistance around 1500 bucks. We're talking about rental assistance for folks. So Democrats got a tremendous amount in this bill. And it is just great that Donald Trump is stepping up and now supporting one of the bigger pieces that Democrats have been asking for for a long time, which is a much more substantial stimulus to all families that are out there under $75,000 a year just to help get our economy going again. So I've, I've, been, cheer- I, I've been cheering Donald Trump for a week now. I, I'm posting on Facebook saying I support his position on trying to push this stimulus again. I wish he'd been there in October. I wish he'd been there in September. He was spending his time jamming through right-wing Supreme Court justices instead of getting this done. The irony, of course, is I think if he had gotten this stimulus done back in October, he probably would have done a little better in the presidential race. So, Phil, why but, don't hey, we, instead of $2,000, how about $10,000 a piece? Well, if you recall some of our previous conversations, I've been focusing on the package of relief should be for individuals yeah. 
not for institutions. Not for so Pakistan. How, how did that work out? Let me just give you a few examples. Uh, is the Kennedy Center at 26 million an individual? The Smithsonian, a billion. The National Art Gallery, 154 million. Oh, oh, but wait, wait, wait. How about in Egypt, 1 billion, 300 million? The Ukraine, 453 million. Nepal, 130 million. Cambodia, 85. What is going on in Washington? We need to help individuals, not institutions. So good for President Trump. Tell him to pull that piece of garbage off his desk, get back into the committee hearings, and take care of individuals. Yeah, you go, Phil. Well, I, well wait a minute. Wait a minute, Phil. You, you know as well as I do, you're referring to a completely different bill. That's right. I knew spending. it's a budget that bill. and then a, to, the, Right. What's so that? let me. But it's what's still. The, what's, the, what's the difference of running the government by thirty-day increments in spending money, or putting together a comprehensive package of economic relief for people who've been impacted by the COVID, and running the government? Why are they two separate conversations? Because they're two separate bills. Mm-hmm. There, if you didn't want the federal spending bill to be part of this bill, then you should have passed a stimulus bill. Back in October, that's what Mitch McConnell decided is he was going to put these two bills together. All the stuff you're listing is stuff that's in the federal bill, and that has to do with national so – all that money for the other countries, by the way, is pushed by our U.S. military in order to protect our country to keep these countries more stable. So perhaps you've got an issue with Trump's military – uh, who are trying to make sure that we keep stability in other countries. But All right. let's get focused on the stimulus piece, which is, you know, a big part of it is going to the American people. But if you want to focus on things in there that aren't, focus on the tax break. Respect the bell! Focused. Remember the rules, respect the bell! I All couldn't right. hear the bell, buddy. I don't know what's going on, but I can't hear it. All right, I'm going to turn it up louder. <laughs> there it is. All I'm right, right. so <laughs> to that end, fellas, on this, what is the end game here, Phil Harriman? The president says it's a disgrace, and 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 Pelosi says this is what I wanted all along. Welcome to the discussion. What's the end game here, Phil? Well, I think that, that the Congress is going to have to pull the bill back and put the sample relief uh, for individuals, put it back on his desk, and I suspect he'll sign it. If they're going to continue to play games, and, you know, Ethan, you, you suggested he was too busy putting Supreme Court justices, the Treasury Department worked with Nancy Pelosi literally every single day for months. She didn't want anything to pass because she wanted to make sure that she could do everything she could to enhance Joe Biden's election. She now, wouldn't do that, Ethan, now would she? To- she wouldn't you know, do that. It's, just, it, it's amazing. The revisionist history. Tell me where Donald Trump. It, remember, Donald Trump's White House negotiated the deal that he is now opposing. His White House was at the table. It's the deal his White House negotiated that he's now opposing. Stop with the revisionist history. She passed a bill. All right. So, three fellas, no, wait a minute. fellas, don't cut me off again. Don't cut me off again, Mike. She passed three bills, and you guys keep trying to claim that she's the one. Look, you want to know what the end game is? Mike? Yes, I do. I hope, I, I hope that he gets to a point. I, I don't know. I mean, he, if he doesn't sign this, our government closes. So that means there's about a week. Are Republicans, the fundamental question is, are Republicans willing to go back to the table in order to increase this $2,000 or not? We know that the House Democrats will pass it. They'll pass it on Thursday with unanimous consent, assuming that no Republicans oppose it. So all pressure now is on Republicans and their desire to get this money. Okay, let's move on. Item number two, the Bangor Daily News says that Janet Mills likely is going to run for re-election in 2022. I've heard discussions and rumors that she wasn't, but they say she's likely. Ethan Strimling, what does likely mean here? Well, it's very strange because yeah. when you read the article, she actually makes this statement that says, I don't see any reason not to, Yeah, <laughs> which is kind of like this double negative trying to come up with a positive. Look, she would walk into re-election, especially if Paula Page is going to be her opponent again. So I, there's no issue for her in terms of whether she could earn a second term. So I'm not sure why she isn't simply saying, I am going to run again. But, you know, she hasn't raised any money at this point. It's kind of an interesting, weird dynamic. You know, if she's going to run, great. And I think everybody will unite behind her and she'll win a second term. If she's not thinking about it, I could understand she doesn't want to appear lame duck for too long. But it's also very important that other people who are thinking about it 
have the opportunity to make sure that Democrats have the strongest candidate possible. Bill Harriman, um, uh, in or out for Janet Mills? Well, I, I think she's, uh, as Ethan is suggesting, she doesn't want to tip her hand at this point because that would make her somewhat irrelevant, uh, particularly if we can lift the um, you know, emergency rule that she is, is employing. I, I think it's more about watch what she does than what she says. And is the uh, re-election campaign opened up a, uh, a new round of uh, PAC disclosures? I uh, don't think so. Is she spending time networking and doing things virtually to rally uh, her, her, her base? I, I'm not aware of any. So it just seems to me that she is either uh, hibernating on purpose until the legislature uh, adjourns in June, or maybe she's decided that her time has come and gone. I'm going to make a prediction here and now. She will not run. There, how's that? Let's move on to item number three, and that is a couple of guys who are going to run against one another for an open Senate seat. The open Senate seat vacated by Shanna Bellows, thinking out, leaving after spending $80,000 of clean election money to take the hack job as Secretary of State, leaving an open <laughs> seat, and it looked as if a guy who used to own that seat or have that seat, Earl McCormick, was going to be the Republican. Frank Hickman, everybody cleared the decks for him. He's going to run for everything before it's over with dog catcher, road commissioner, right now at state senator. But at the caucus on Sunday, he has upset Earl McCormick by Bill Garrett, a former state representative. And so what happened here, Ethan Strimling? I thought Earl McCormick was going to be the guy. And then apparently Garrett rounded up more people to show up than he did. Yeah, you know, I've got it on very, very good source that um, this was just a total screw up on part of the Republican leadership. I mean, they basically said to Earl McCormick, we want you to run. You're the one with the right name recognition. You're the strongest opportunity to win. We'll take care of it. McCormick was like, OK, look, you know, you guys want to make sure this happens. Then I'm happy to be your candidate. And then they basically didn't show up at the caucus. Yeah. And this guy, Garrett, gets it, who nobody knows. I mean, the level of incompetence among the Republican Senate leadership is just incredible. I mean, yep. you guys have got 13 seats at this point. You haven't been this low in 40 years. Here's an opportunity to pick one up. You couldn't even get your hand-picked nominee to be the nominee well they're work alone. they're working on rank choice voting ethan don't you know <laughs> demi and jason are busy <laughs> you know, this, Bill? this just just shows you that uh, the inside baseball that goes on uh is just it's uh, it's it's infuriating because first of all shanna bellows as you alluded to will run for anything that gets her more uh, political power. She runs for the state Senate, spends $80,000 of my taxpayers, our taxpayers' dollars, and then decides she's got a better opportunity, which turns this Senate seat into an insider's game. Only the people who care enough to go to a caucus and only the people who care enough to go vote in March are going to determine the fate of about 35,000 citizens who live in that district. Yeah, it says a lot, doesn't it? But it most of all says bad things about the state party of the Republicans at yep. the state level. A yep. bunch of incompetent boobs, and they need we yep. need a regime change in Augusta for the Republicans. All right, let's move on. We saw Dr. Fauci yesterday getting the COVID vaccine. We've seen Vice President Pence get it. We've seen who else? We've seen uh, Lindsey Graham get it. We've seen AOC get it, a healthy, skinny 31-year-old woman. It's always great to see the politicians go right to the front of the line and see AOC and Lindsey Graham and Marco Rubio get the vaccine, say, Phil Harriman, before my 97-year-old father does. It warms my heart, you know? Yeah, that, just another example of uh, the, the, they cannot see what they what the, the optics that they are presenting to the public, which is, I, I'm from Washington. I'm more important than you are. I'm essential. Therefore, I come first. Why don't they stand outside and say, no, you, you come out in front of me. No, you need it more than I do. AOC is a perfect example. Statistically, the likelihood of her dying from COVID is 0. 0.000 whatever. And she, in the name of I'm going to show my constituents that it's safe to take the vaccine, steps in front of the elderly. Unbelievable. 
But is it really right. Ethan Strimling? Isn't this expected reliable behavior from politicians? I just I, I do find it unfortunate that people the partisanship of the attacks in this going after AOC Marco Rubio is in the exact I said same Marco category. Rubio so I said I Lindsey Graham it, Phil just went after AOC like she was well she would be the AOC. most glaring example at 31 years old she has a better yeah, chance no, of getting hit no, by a bus she's no more glaring example than Marco Rubio than any other if you want to attack on this point and look I, I get it these are fun these are cheap shots we want to go for people. I, I'm, I don't let's have focus on the this. act and not let's focus on the whole thing in general on on yeah, these politicians I, I getting and to I the front of the said, line. You know, for me, I don't have as big of an issue. It's cheap shots to go after all of them. Mitch McConnell, Mike God, Pence. I can you no ever be right on an issue just up. once? Good Lord. I can't I can't hear you. What did you say? I said, can you ever take the common sense side of an issue just once? Well, let me finish my sentence. No, you don't need to. You just said what you needed to say, but go ahead. Uh, Look, (laughs) the the issue is, unfortunately, in this country right now, there is is this vaccine and the coronavirus has become political. So a lot of elected leaders are recognizing Democrats and Republicans coming together to try to say to the American people, understand that this is safe you need to take it we don't want you to die and that's what's going on their doctors said to them you should take this because you're in the public etc and you don't want to continuity look are the optics of it terrible okay i get it but all i'm saying is these are cheap shots for the most part they're not getting it at the expense of your 94 year old grandfather your 94 year old father he's 97 anybody else yeah they are yep my father should have gotten the shot before AOC. No question about that. And Marco Rubio. All right, let's move on. Let's go to Portland where it's interesting, Ethan. You get rejected by the voters of Portland. They don't want you to be mayor anymore. They want Kate Snyder to be mayor. And then the year after they kick you out of office, they adopt and vote for all of the things that you have advocated for, including hazard pay for those people who are performing, quote, hazardous work end of quotation the portland school board enacts hazard pay for public school workers the city council though silent on city workers what's going on in your kingdom ethan your former kingdom <laughs> i know it's uh i refer to this as the fifth year of my first term right the of work that we've actually gotten done it's uh, been remarkable and your best uh, year yeah. as mayor has been the year you weren't mayor you know it it's really amazing <laughs> we actually got uh, you know i appreciate that we actually got a lot done too but you know this is one of the biggest battles i had as mayor was saying to the council this city is more progressive than you are you are not representing the city and that was part of the huge conflict and it's part of why i wasn't able to win a second term no doubt about it how hard they pushed back i think we are proving that actually the city is as progressive as the policies that we were trying to pass and hopefully the council will hear that what the school board did last night was great basically about a hundred employees in the school department these are uh, assistants temporary workers food service workers um, uh, bus aides ed techs about a hundred of them are now going to get bumps up to 18 bucks an hour to make sure that nobody has to work in these kind of conditions without uh, being able to get compensated at least at a minimal living wage so really really just great work by the school board. I hope the city council follows suit. They could do the same thing. They've been silent. Phil Harriman, is hazard pay hazardous? Well, it, it just see, strikes me as uh, incomprehensible that one arm of the city government would determine to pay hazardous pay, and the other arm <laughs> uh, it, it can't make up their mind. <laughs> and then you put, you put people, first responders, right? If you're an EMT technician and you're going into people's homes to help them get to an emergency room or or need transportation to uh you know from an accident or something like that i, I think that's considered hazardous work why, why aren't they getting a bump in their pay right right exactly hazardous pay all right <laughs> lastly fellas you got a column this week in the bdn oh this is going to be good ethan and i had a lot of fun with this uh sarah gideon had four million dollars yeah. left over that she couldn't spend on her campaign and so now she's got quite a little pile of gold there mm-hmm. to uh, disperse and uh ethan has uh decided what advice he would give her uh as have i and you're and gonna don't forget we've also decided to give donald trump a little advice with the 200 million dollars he's got in his bank account sitting around just uh swamping well, he... what uh, sarah gideon has Bellis? He's spending it on lawyers. 
<laughs> Can't wait to read it in the Bangor Daily News and online at bangordailynews.com. We wish both of you and your families a very Merry Christmas, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. You too, Greg. There they are. Phil Harriman and Ethan Strimling. Agree to disagree with Phil Harriman and Ethan Strimling can also be seen every week in the Bangor Daily News and on bangordailynews.com. Focus on the White House. A day after the White House said the president welcomed it, the president now indicates he might not sign the $900 billion pandemic relief measure. One issue, the one-time stimulus payments to individuals. Increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. He calls the bill negotiated by his own Treasury Secretary a disgrace. Christmas time pardons and sentence commutations for 20 individuals, political allies, Russia inquiry figures. President Trump used his pardon power to benefit two political allies. Former Republican Congressman Chris Collins and Duncan Hunter had each pleaded guilty to felony charges. President Trump also pardoned the campaign operative whose Russia contacts triggered what became the Mueller investigation. The pardons of George Papadopoulos, along with Dutch attorney Alex Vanderswan, further erode the legal consequences of an investigation President Trump has long called a hoax. ABC's Aaron Katursky, Richard Cantu, ABC News. At Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, they understand that when faced with difficult and challenging times, it's a comfort to know that we'll get through this together. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union is committed to keeping not only their members safe, but also their dedicated employees. They're following CDC guidelines, protocols, and social distancing at all of their facilities. They may have changed some of their usual ways of doing business, but they haven't changed how they treat their members. Their safest services are available through drive-up, ATM, telephone, easy banking, mobile banking, by phone, or appointment. Lobbies are currently open in the Skowhegan and Farmington branches, and with the holidays just around the corner, Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union has a reason to brighten your season with their holiday loan special going on now through December 31st. Just ask any of their friendly and knowledgeable loan officers in Skowhegan, Farmington, Madison, Kingfield, or Stratton for complete details or online at f-sfcu.com. Franklin Somerset Federal Credit Union, where their most important member is you. Member NCUA. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's. Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go. Take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's. Collision Centers. M-O-O-D-Y. Your kid was talking on the cell phone, drove right through your own home, sitting in the parking lot, maybe you get hit a lot, driving through the green light, suddenly your side swipe, put it in reverse, but it turned out that it was first. Take it to Moody's, take it to Moody's, collision centers, M-O-O-D-Y, take it to Moody's. ABC News, I'm Faith Abube. In an unexpected move, President Trump now says he won't sign the latest COVID relief bill. The president says he wants Americans to get bigger stimulus checks, even though Republicans and those in his own administration fought against that. ABC's Rachel Scott. Democrats say they will take Trump up on his offer and do what they've been proposing for months, pass a bill that would put $2,000 in the pockets of Americans. Republicans refuse to budge on the price tag of the roughly $900 billion stimulus package. And now one of the president's closest allies, Senator Lindsey Graham, calling the bill imperfect, but saying the sooner the bill becomes law, the better. No presidential signature means any checks Americans were hoping to receive next week now on hold. California's health care system is buckling under the strain of the coronavirus outbreak. The state's largest hospital system says increasingly exhausted staff are now attending to COVID patients stacked up in hallways and in conference rooms. This is ABC News. The coronavirus having a huge impact on the total number of deaths across the country this year. The CDC says the increase of deaths in the U.S. by at least 400,000 people in 2020 could bring the lifespan down for the year by as many as three full years. The U.S. recorded more than three million deaths this year for the first time ever. COVID-19 followed heart disease and cancer as the leading causes. Other causes were also up, like pneumonia, diabetes, and dementia. Experts think those increases could have links to COVID-19. 
The final death toll is also expected to show a big increase in the number of drug overdose deaths. Brian Clark, ABC News. The city of Columbus has relieved a police officer of duty after that officer was involved in the deadly shooting early yesterday of a 47-year-old black man. Neither of the officers on the scene activated their body cameras until after the shooting, but a feature of the camera actually captured video of the shooting itself. However, no audio was recorded. Faith Abube, ABC News. Right now, Allstate has almost as many ways to save as there are types of music. Save for being a new customer. Save more for adding DriveWise. And save even more for driving safely. Visit Allstate.com or contact your local agent to get a quote. Find out how much you can save today. Allstate, now that should be music to your ears. Not available in every state. New customer savings based on early signing discount. DriveWise is an optional feature. Savings vary based on how you buy. Subject to terms and conditions. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. I'm Dr. Baker, an ER physician. If you're having leg pain, swelling, or redness, but haven't talked to your doctor yet, don't wait. This could be deep vein thrombosis, a blood clot which could travel to your lungs and lead to a pulmonary embolism, which could cause chest pain or discomfort or difficulty breathing and be deadly. Your symptoms could mean something serious, so don't wait. Talk to a doctor right away by phone, online, or in person. Brought to you by Bristol-Myers Squibb and Pfizer. Good morning, I'm CBS 13's John Crisos with a news update on Legacy 1160 WSKW. President Trump is telling lawmakers they need to change their COVID-19 relief bill, suggesting he may not sign the $900 billion legislation. The president says the long-awaited bill is a disgrace and is calling on Congress to increase stimulus payments from $600 to $2,000 and get rid of wasteful and unnecessary items. The main CDC is reporting 10 new COVID-related deaths and 458 new known cases. The number of deaths is now above 300 since the start of the pandemic, and the total cases is nearing 20,000. 185 people are currently hospitalized. Governor Janet Mills has extended Maine's state of civil emergency through January 20th. In a statement, Governor Mills also reminded Mainers to remain vigilant this holiday season, saying, quote, The biggest gift we can give this holiday season is not a present under the tree or a hug to a loved one. The best gift we can give and the best gift we can receive is good health. New this morning, RSU 73, located northwest of Augusta, now gives the green light for some winter sports. The Livermore Falls advertiser reports alpine and Nordic skiing, along with basketball, cheer, and ice hockey, have all been approved. This flips the school board's decision, which went against winter sports earlier this month. In a letter, health officials put the safety of those in the school first in line, but said winter sports could happen if safety guidelines are followed. And in sports, the Celtics will tip off the new season tonight at home against the Milwaukee Bucks. The game is at 7.30. I'm CBS 13's John Crisos on Legacy 1160 WSKW. Electrical repair should never be done without the knowledge of how to do it safely. Better yet, skip that stress and let Kennebec Electric and Lighting take care of it for you. Kennebec Electric has offered professional electric and lighting service and expert installation in homes and businesses for over 37 years. And they stand behind that experience with a guarantee on all their work. Kennebec Electric and Lighting. Contact them for all your electric and lighting servicing, including installations and repairs at 861-7028 or online at kennebecelectric.com. The holidays are the best times to spend with those we love as we share memories and create new ones. But if you do plan on toasting to good times with family and friends remember it's never a good idea to drink and drive if you're planning on having a drink this christmas please protect your friends and your community by designating a driver or calling a cab that way everyone returns home safely this message brought to you by delta ambulance compassion leadership excellence that's delta ambulance ho ho hold up the year is ending already and we're way behind we've got to do something fast and we won't hit our year-end goal so this month we're slaying prices don't wait for the jolly old elf because right now santa joey at colbrook mitsubishi will give you four thousand minimum for your old sled drive away in a brand new 2020 mitsubishi mirage with no money down for 179 a month or choose a new 2020 mitsubishi eclipse cross or mitsubishi outlander sport with no money down for 299 a month choose our top of the line model the 2020 mitsubishi outlander with room for seven with no money down for only 320 a month these are purchases not leases that's a brand new vehicle with a 10-year 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty with no down payment are other dealers roasting your chestnuts over past credit mishaps let us help you beat the holiday blues and drive home a new mitsubishi today 
Come visit us at Colebrook Mitsubishi Route 201 in Skowhegan or visit us online at colebrookmitsubishi.com. I'm CBS 13 meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Mostly sunny this morning and for today with highs in the low to mid 30s. Mostly cloudy, milder tomorrow with highs in the 40s. It will be breezy, but the winds will really pick up at night into Christmas Day. Wind gusts over 50 miles per hour are possible for Thursday night and into Friday. Mild in the 50s for Christmas Day, but with rain and strong winds. Batten down the hatches, baby. Right now, we have lots of sunshine out there. 23 in Skowhegan, 25 in Waterville, 27 degrees in Augusta. You are up to date from Legacy 1160, WSKW. His mediocre high school academic achievements have prepared him nicely for a career in radio. Fat, drunk, and stupid. There's no way to go through life, son. It's the Mike Violet Show on Legacy 1160, WSKW. Good morning, 837. Happy Festivus. Today is Festivus, the airing of the grievances, meatloaf, the pole, no tinsel. Merry Christmas to you and yours, and happy Festivus. I mean, it goes without saying, right? The show is brought to you by Kennebec Electric and Lighting, 861-7028, online, kennebecelectric.com, live stream the show. John's show, His Freedom Pep Rally, begins in about 20 minutes at 9 o'clock from 9 until noon. All of our music, and of course, starting tomorrow, um, after the show, after John's show at noon, we'll have Christmas music for you. Right through Christmas, Legacy1160.com is where you go to live stream us. That is sponsored by the Harry J. Smith Company. Go on Facebook to the Legacy page, to my page, John's page, American Women Who Bear Arms, Freedom Pep Rally page. You can find... Our live feed there, and you can also find it on YouTube as well. Go to YouTube and type in Legacy 1160, the audio and video brought to you by Moody's Collision Center. Now, when it comes to this bill, it's really more better put or well said. It's bills. All right. There's a coronavirus relief package, and then there's a budget. And political types will, and Ethan being one of them, We'll try to, you know, they'll try to justify with what happened here in the last 24 hours by, by pointing that out. Like that's going to make us any feel, feel any better here. This crazy spending stuff, you know, the Smithsonian institution. I know that's in the regular budget, the Pakistan money. I know that's in the regular, but, but that's, is that supposed to make us feel any better? Well, the, there's the COVID relief package and then there's the, you know, the budget. No, it's not. No, it doesn't pacify anyone with half a brain who's not some political operative or hack. I don't want to hear it. Congressman Jared Golden's going to be here tomorrow in the eight o'clock hour. And we're going to talk about this. He voted for it, but he really wasn't for it. And I'm not trying to defend Jared Golden. I would have voted against it. I'll let him defend himself if he feels like he needs to. But he did at least come out yesterday and hammer Steny Hoyer, the second in command, for whining like a baby about the fact that there wasn't a cost of living increase for members of Congress here. Can you believe it? Yeah, that's what basically Jared Golden said. Talk about being out of touch. Absolutely. But don't stand there and tell me that well, you know, there's the coronavirus relief bill where we're giving we're giving you the significant gift of six hundred dollars. We also have in the legislation uh, d- direct payments, which were not in the Republican bill, to America's working families. I would like them b- been bigger, but they are uh, significant, and they will be going out soon. You notice the old battle axe. Never said the amount in that cut. Significant. (laughs) Significant. That's significant pocket money for Nancy Pelosi. Significant. It isn't going to help Jack Diddley squat here in Maine or any of the other 49 states. But I don't care that there's two separate bills. We Americans don't care. Because the way Congress does business is idiotic. We knew that, but it's insane. 
It's insane that they think, whether it's in a COVID relief bill or in a regular budget, it's insane that they think of, hmm, you know, what is going on in Pakistan? I'm really bothered by that. So, you know, there are things in there. The foreign aid budget is 1% of all American spending. Yeah. Pakistan is a place I really worry about. 85 countries, a woman can't open up a bank account without her husband's signature. She can't inherit property. If you're a young girl in Pakistan, life is pretty tough. So we're trying to make life better for women throughout the world. But 1% of all federal spending uh, is foreign assistance. Who thinks about Pakistan and worries about Pakistan? I don't. If you do, you're abnormal. Unless you're a native of Pakistan with relatives or friends over there, and you're here in America, tough. I'm sorry. It's tough love here. When's Pakistan done us any favors, huh? I don't... It it sucks that women in Pakistan can't get a bank account and can't inherit money or whatever the problem is over there. It sucks. I'm, I, you know, but not my problem. So therefore don't give them $10 million. The Smithsonian Institute. I know Senator Collins is a sponsor of the bill for this women's history museum act. I, 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 it's great. As um, President Trump said in his speech last night condemning this thing, it's not even open, for God's sakes. It's not even open. Can we stop this? Well, maybe we can. Maybe it's happening. I don't know. Who the hell knows with these people? You really don't. They're nutty. They think about gender programs in Pakistan. That's what they, they, there's members of Congress thinking about that. Why? If you're thinking about gender studies in Pakistan as a member of Congress and funding that, you shouldn't be in Congress. Aside from Steny Hoyer saying that they're underpaid and they need a cost of living allowance, you shouldn't be in Congress there either. But from... How many more different directions, and again, I am beating a drum that I beat every single day, can they put the boots to us before we rise up? It's happening everywhere you turn. It doesn't matter who it is, Democrats, Republicans, whether it's wildly spending our money, whether it's jumping to the front of the line and being happy about it, when it comes to the Coronavirus vaccines? I don't care whether it's Marco Rubio or AOC. They put the boots to us again. They did it to us again. We let them do it to us again. They've ruined the lives of many Americans, whether it is General Mills here in Maine, whether it's the heavy-handed stuff of another governor in another state, and then... They hand you the six hundred dollars. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Thank you, sir. May I have another? Thank you, sir. May I have another? And guess what? When the man who the mainstream media says won the election takes over, it's only going to get worse. The rant by Senator Rand Paul, which was magnificent from the other day will be quickly forgotten. And crazy spending will be back in vogue. The kind of crazy spending that is in this budget will be the norm again. Because that's what Joe Biden knows. That's what Kamala Harris knows. It's only going to get worse. We've made it worse. Congratulations. Or the mainstream media made it worse. Or the phony election made it worse or whatever it is, is about to make it worse. It's going to get worse. I, you know, I'm, I have no, why would I have confidence in Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to straighten things out? The swamp gets deeper, gets filled back up again. Instead of being drained, 
They're going to put a fire hose in it and fill it up, and it's going to overflow. Now, I'm not going to sit here like Joe Biden and be a Debbie Downer and talk about, well, the worst times ever are coming and such. By the way, I have another cut from Biden. Um, This is yesterday after he made his remarks and he was walking away from the podium. Peter Ducey of Fox News spoke up. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. God love you, man. You're a one-horse pony. That's a one-trick pony, Mr. Biden. Not a one-horse pony. There's no such thing. There's a dog-faced pony soldier, which you've used before, but it's a one-trick pony, not a one-horse. There couldn't be a one-horse pony. A one-trick pony is a one-trick pony. There's no such thing as a one-horse pony, but there is a such thing as a dog-faced pony soldier. This guy as he waddles away from that podium, I'm telling you, he ain't going to make the first year. It, it's, he is a deer caught in the headlights. When he looks into the teleprompter and the camera, I, it's like there's a, it's a vacant lot. <laughs> it's just a shade of black. It's like a test pattern back in the old television days. There's absolutely nothing there. But it's going to be interesting to see here in the next couple of days. What Pelosi and McConnell and company do after this rejection by the president? Let's look. The president's got nothing to lose here. Stand your ground. Do not give in. Veto this thing. Threaten a veto with this thing and get it changed around. It's, 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 it's just full of useless garbage. And the COVID relief bill doesn't really relieve COVID, as the president pointed out. I think uh, he pointed it out here. Congress found plenty of money for foreign countries, lobbyists, and special interests while sending the bare minimum to the American people who need it. It wasn't their fault. It was China's fault. Yes. Not their fault. Right. Exactly. And we don't care which bill it's in. We don't care if the money for Pakistan is in the COVID relief bill or in the regular budget bill. We don't care. We just care that it's going there and it's not staying here. And it's not America first. None of this stuff is. And the Smithsonian and all of the other, you know, uh, people with their hands out, nonprofits, Kennedy Institute. God almighty, how much money does the Kennedy Institute need? Meantime, there are shopkeepers, there are tavern owners, there are restaurant owners, there are anybody, is anybody in the hospitality industry, hotels, motels, campgrounds, crushed by this. They're not going to get their money. That ain't going to happen. So let's hope they bring this back and delete a whole bunch of stuff. You know, am I sitting here jonesing around for a $2,000 check? Not necessarily. What I'm sitting around jonesing for here is for the money to be spent appropriately in the United States of America in direct payments to businesses and people. So, you know, if that's wrong, then call me wrong. I don't understand the mentality of worrying about what's going on in Pakistan. And if Lindsey Graham does literally worry about that, he's mentally ill. You've got to be crazy. To worry about that, especially now, especially now, it's as bad as it's been. And again, I don't want to be, you know, Joe Biden, Mr. Negative Nelly here saying that our darkest times are coming and all that other stuff, because I don't believe that we have a vaccine. If the politicians would shut up and let Americans get back to work, let Americans live their lives let Americans open and run their businesses. Everything would be fine. Biden, though, still talking about a hundred day mask, you know, you know, thing, rule, law, enforcement, whatever, which is just dumb. And other things, you know, schools, you know, sports. It's 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 it, it's crazy. And the craziest part of this is, is that we have sat around 
and we have all allowed it to happen. We are all absolutely positively guilty here, as guilty as we can be. And until and unless we make the decision that we're not going to take this anymore, it's going to keep happening to us. Janet Mills extended the emergency declaration yesterday for another month. We're going to go now to January 20th of next year, which ironically is inauguration day for the man who the mainstream media says won the election. And that's just another part of this. That's just another part of the scare tactics to keep you fearful, to keep fear in you so that you'll do your job and stay home, unlike them, or you'll wear your mask or enforce your mask or put the or, or call and drop a dime on your friends and neighbors and your businesses in your town or city. It's just to keep the fear in you. Don't fall for it. Emergency restrictions my foot. I couldn't dislike this governor more than I do at this very moment. It's 852. A man who I don't dislike. I have no disdain for. I love him like my broadcasting brother. John James Freedom Pep Rally is coming up next. Take a break. I'll come back and tell you about tomorrow. Big show tomorrow on Christmas Eve here with a couple of terrific guests tomorrow. That's coming up next. I'm Mike Violet. This is Legacy 1160 WSKW. ABC Entertainment News. Only two days until many get to open the Christmas present that is Wonder Woman 1984. Nothing good is born from lies. A sequel to the 2017 blockbuster starring Gal Gadot, who says this time around, Wonder Woman is a little more emo. She's very lonely. Uh, she lost all of her friends, all of her team members, uh, you know, along the years. And she doesn't want to engage with anybody because she doesn't want to experience the loss and she doesn't want them to discover that she's immortal and she doesn't old and age and all of that. Wonder Woman 1984 is in theaters and streaming on HBO Max Christmas Day. Out today, George Clooney's latest film. Is anyone out there? He stars in and directs the sci-fi thriller The Midnight Sky, which you can watch on Netflix. The HBO fantasy drama His Dark Materials is getting a season three production to begin next year. And hopefully he's not spending his birthday in the Upside Down. Stranger Things star Finn Wolfhard is 18 today. Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Hollywood. If you've checked the gift list twice and it's got something different for everyone on it, just head to Townline Antique Center on the Winslow Vassalboro Town Line. With two floors and over 50 dealers, you can find the perfect gift for each one of them. Are you worried about spending too much? Townline Antiques is here to help you with that too. Because all December long, every booth at Townline Antiques is offering discounts of 10, 20, 30, 40, some even 50% off their selection. There's always new, cool, and unique gift ideas, including collectibles, furniture, artwork, signs, books, and much more. Of course, the problem is, you not only find lots of great gift ideas, you'll come across things that you may want to take home for yourself. But with their December sale of up to 50% off, you can take them all home for less. So don't miss out on this santa size sale with savings up to 50% off this December. At Townline Antiques, open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 to 5, Route 201, right on the Winslow Vassalboro Town Line. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Center. If your car is a wreck and you don't know where to go, take it to Moody's. You want to get on with your life, get on with the show. Take it to Moody's. Good people you can trust and it won't be your fault. Take it to Moody's Collision Center. M O. O-D-Y. Your kid was talking on the cell phone, drove right through your own home, sitting in the parking lot. Maybe you get hit a lot, driving through the green light. Suddenly your side swipe, put it in reverse, but it turned out that it was first. Take it to Moody's. Take it to Moody's Collision Centers. I'm a hiker, and I am Sam. 
The Sportsman's Alliance of Maine is a champion of our rights to fully enjoy Maine as we like. Support the preservation of our proud outdoor heritage by becoming a member at sportsmansallianceofmaine.org today. Hi, Seth Batty with Rockland Ford here. If you are in the market for a new SUV, the deals have never been better. I've seen 0% financing and I've seen massive rebates, but I've never seen 0% financing and massive rebates. Until the end of the year, you can get the best of both worlds. How would you like to own a brand new 2020 Ford Explorer for $6,000 off MSRP and 0% interest for only $4.99 a month with no money down. I repeat, you can own a brand new Ford Explorer for only $4.99 a month with no money down. Or how about a brand new Ford Escape for only $19,999 or $2.99 a month with no money down. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Own a brand new Ford Escape for only $19,999 or $2.99 a month with no money down. I've been in the business for quite some time now, and I've never seen deals better than this. Come on down to Rockland Ford off Route 1 in Thomaston or call us today. Deals are with qualified credit while supplies last, and customer must trade in a vehicle. Eight fifty-seven Tomorrow, of course, Christmas Eve, also the 97th birthday of the King my father will turn 97 tomorrow, a little celebration there. But here on the radio tomorrow, in the 7 o'clock hour, it's a whole hour of a special edition of Contact Sports with Dean's Contras. Dina will join me from 7 until 8. In the 8 o'clock hour, it's a whole hour of Congressman Jared Golden. Back from D.C. with tales to tell, that's for sure. So it should be a very interesting hour with both Dean's Contras starting at 7 and with Congressman Jared Golden starting at 8. John James is in the house. Good morning, Mr. James. Um, say that again. How are you? I'm, I'm well. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. We've got a, we've got a doctor on today. At I know you do. There's a doctor in the house today. There is. Well, on the Dr. sort of in the house. Dr. G. Dr. G is going to be here. Yeah, and tomorrow uh, in the 11 o'clock hour, uh, we're going to be talking with uh, Sydney Standard, who is a YouTube personality, and she's part of our Black Voices Matter series. Oh, so that she's she's and she is just great. So, so uh, you're going to have a black person on the show tomorrow. We are, yes, we Excellent. are. Excellent, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. And they say there's no diversity here I'm at telling Legacy. You, I am <laughs> telling you, right? <laughs> All right, so stay tuned. Johnny's here with Doctor G coming up in the Freedom Pep Rally at nine thirty, and then tomorrow, what's her name again? Sydney Standard. Okay, Sid- Sydney's coming up tomorrow. Enjoy the day. Happy Festivus. Remember, it's Festivus, Festivus today. For Festivus. the rest of us. Exactly. And I'll see you back here bright and early tomorrow morning at 6. From the Home Auto Group Studios, Farmington Ford and Franklin Chrysler in Farmington, this is WSKW, Skowhegan, Augusta, Waterville, Legacy 1160. ABC News, I'm Chesa Bube. Another round of vaccines is on the way. Pfizer has just announced a second agreement with the U.S. government to supply another 100 million doses of its vaccine. That doubles the number of doses on order from the company. They're expected to be delivered by the end of July. But before all the vaccines can be given, there's still the looming danger of the coronavirus being spread right now by holiday travelers. Stanford's Dr. Ryan Ribeiro. My biggest piece of advice if you are looking to travel for the holidays is don't if you can avoid it. But since Friday, the TSA says more than 4 million people People have gone through airport security checks the most since before the pandemic. President Trump demanding changes to the coronavirus stimulus package passed by Congress. Increase the ridiculously low $600 to $2,000 or $4,000 for a couple. And threatening not to sign it unless the change is made. Washington Democrats quickly jumping on board with the idea. This is ABC News. The weight of rising coronavirus cases being felt across the country. In California, leaders of the state's biggest 